Well, welcome, welcome, guys. Oh, man, we're starting the really good sound here. Music, song, what's the phrase? Audio, background. Yeah, there it is. Welcome, guys. Hope you all had a nice weekend. It's Monday. It's actually very late on Monday. Um, and I'm starting up for uh, the next episode of the Let's Play. We're going to be continuing some of these side quests. Also, before reset, what I'd really like to do is get the daily strike in and maybe a daily meta. Let's have a look at the event timers as we kick off here. But yeah, uh, over these final five episodes, um, I'd really like to see the end of Arborstone at the very least. I mean, we're, we're nearing it already. Finishing fishing and turtles would obviously... Well, fishing is the other big thing I'd really like to over these five uh, five parts. But um, yeah, finishing these these quests, really, really, really cool. And I want to get them done. Maybe some more of the more subtle side achievements. But yeah, once I've got the masteries done and we're just into the fishing phase, I really do think that's actually a really, really good sort of overall look at End of Dragons. Um, and I'm happy to, uh, to sort of end it there. So yeah uh that's kind of the idea now uh the daily strike today let's have a quick look as we log in this is sort of what i recommend you guys start doing when uh you're in here as well if you just type strike into the achievement filter you got weeklies oh okay because weeklies reset hasn't it including world versus world i've got to work on that um let's see so it's the jinlai junk j junkyard really i thought it was the uh the rooftop interesting so yeah we'll be anchor um, then in, in the Ice Speed Saga, it's the frame here. I can't be bothered with that. That's not necessary. Neither's this. What's the difference between a priority and a daily stroke? Seems a bit confused to me. Uh, but yeah, doing all of them at least once over the week seems to have reset here as well. That's what gives us our legendary insight. Um, right, so I think the best thing for us to do here is I will tag up now. I'm on NA now. We were on EU a bunch before. I've swapped to NA now. So if you guys would like to play, um, here's what I'll do. I'll squad up. I'll go to raid mode. I'll go to the live chat, which obviously we've just started. Uh, but if anyone wants to join, just copy paste that, squad join list. And I uh, will do that. In the meantime, uh, while we wait to fill up, I could also obviously go to LFG. I don't really think there's a necessity for that. Um, in the meantime... Here's my train. I beat my train over the weekend. Oh, I also cleaned my inventory. Um, salvaged a bunch of stuff down. Uh, so, like, I unlocked a ton of the uh, the salt spray weapons and flame serpent stuff. You know, all those kinds of things. So, got them all melted down. Um, hold on. Let's see. If I go here. Oh, we got a week three end of dragon supply drop. I can open that and see what that's all about. Here, daily gathering yields. We can grab both of these. And my my inventory is honestly such a mess at this point. It's unreal. Uh, let's open this. All of this. All of this. All of this. Deposit. And then research kit. The two winterberry sorbets that I just picked up. So we get some notes from that. Would have been nice if I got some of the other winterberry stuff. But hey, whatever. Got two more tomes of knowledge there as well. Look, I swear my inventory was clean. What's this from drop three? Week three. We get an outfit. Are there any outfits that I don't have yet? They're on this. Oh god, I hope I don't have every single one. Well hold on, is this just a random outfit? Oh no no no, it's not. So hold on, hold on here. Let's try it this way. Jesus Christ. People spamming sk uh, skill effects in the background. Okay, so hold on. The outfits I'm missing is Astral Scholar and Ebon Vanguard. So if we see either of those. So it is alphabetical. So Astral Scholar I could get. Looks like this. Thing is, we're looking at this on Gux. Or the Ebon Vanguards. Ebon Vanguard isn't actually on there, it looks like. So, we'll just get Astral Scholar then. Sorted, right? Because it's EB, it would be after the Dynamic Suit, and it's not. <clears throat> just trying to see, there might be like a really weird outfit that's like hidden until it's not hidden or whatever. 
No, it looks pretty good to me. Okay, so yeah, uh, Astral Scholar. Don't don't really know when this came out or how old it is or whatever, but there you go. So Astral Scholar. Do we get any lore about it? You jumped. Usually somewhere there's a little bit, maybe on the the gemstone stuff. What do we got here? We got a Black Lion Weapon Voucher. Now I have all of these skins. Now this is going to be a lot harder. I can't just check. So once again, it's alphabetical. There will be something in here that I don't have. There you go. So the Wolf Heart skin I don't have. I doubt I have the shield either. It's a shame you don't get them together. They sort of look like they would have been sold together. The Tiger Insignia Axe, I don't have. Stormboat. The Spellfire Torch. This might be interesting for us on a uh, Scourge. Oh, interesting. There's no preview on that one. That's weird. Shield of the Goddess I'm good with. Ritualist Staff I'm good with. The Raven Soul Dagger. Isn't this one new? These are all just so uninteresting to me at this point. There's just so many flashy skins. I would really aim for something with a good projectile sound effect or unsheath. Hammer of the Three Realms. Maybe curious for a catalyst. The Dreamwalker Sword. Oh, I quite like this. I quite like that sword. I have to say, I might pick that. That sword's probably going to look really good on some characters. And look, it's got a, it's like the incinerator. It's got an actual like extension on sheath thing. Oh wow, it's also a part of the uh, the scythe skin set. Dude, you could play a rev with with dream. Oh, there's a dreamwalker dagger too. Oh, I have the dreamwalker dagger, do I? I think it's gonna be the dreamwalker sword for me. Oh, bone dragon staff. Oh, it's crap in Guild Wars two though. Look at that was like the height of flashiness in Guild Wars one. Something about its size seems a bit weird here. I kind of want the BDS just because Guild Wars 1, but no, I refuse. Let's do the Dreamwalker Sword. I really think that looked cool. Gimme, gimme. I could definitely imagine playing a, um, a rev with that at some point. Okay, what else did they give me? Uh, two die canisters, green. Ugh, lame. I think I'll just sell those red canisters. And black canisters. Oh, wait, no, what? Fine. Oh, black lion. This is yellow. Sorry, yellow, the canisters. All right, that's fine. Okay, good. I still don't quite know what to do with these. This is for the precursor, isn't it? Uh, so I was told as well on Discord a second ago that I really should finish Arbor Stone so that I can start making daily purchases. We'll see about that. Wow, literally nobody's joining. Should I maybe swap back to EU? Oh, I'll, I'll type into guild chat here, actually. I thought I was going to look there and we'd have like 10 out of 10 filled. Um, but I guess not. Oh, God. I somehow clicked out of the client. Anyway. So, yeah, today was a pretty special cool day. Um, well, special cool day. I, I did a special video today, a weird video. I did a video that's basically just a PowerPoint presentation. My ideas for season six, which... Well, hold on. Let's get into an event so I can uh, chat about this while we play. It looks like currently the Gang War of Echovald's up, so I'll go do that. It also looks like the Kynang Blackout is ending. So let's go see how well all these things line up. Um, and I'm just starting to get feedback from people on it. I'm kind of aggravated because everyone's talking to me as though... Two warriors from opposing factions stood together to conquer a common enemy. Jesus Christ, that was loud. Um, it must be on my end, actually, that I've got all this stuff so loud. Uh, and it looks like the meta isn't done. So let's just go to... Or, or failed or something. Let's go to the gang wars instead. Uh, yeah, I'm getting a lot of people saying, I disagree, there should be voice acting. And it's like, I don't know, maybe I, 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 I sp spoke, I communicated this poorly, but a lot of people are treating me as though I've advocated for removing all voice acting from the game. And that's not true. I, I don't know what it is. I don't know whether it's that I'm a terrible communicator, or whether it's that people are like just very binary thinkers, but it seems people really can't imagine a world where we still have voice acting, but less, right? That's what I'm pretty sure I just did in that video. I said... The commander can talk, but less, right? Less voice acting in exchange for much more text, right? That's what I'm saying. 
And people are interpreting that as... I'm trying to get rid of all voice acting from the game or something. It's like, I'm just, I'm being honest, alright? I'm not coddling you and I'm not promising the world. I'm, I'm uh, observing the fact that most living world patches are very thin and don't have the story that I want them to have. And so I could sit there and say, ha ha, just add a ton more voice acting. Hey, see, let's magic it. Let's invent it out of nowhere. I could do that. And you'd all say, yay, WP, we are awesome. Let's invent it. Woo. Or I could be realistic and treat you like an adult and say they clearly can't get more in. The answer is to give us story in the most economical way possible, which is through text. So let's, and if we're going to make a trade-off on voice acting for text, let's do it. That's what, that's, that's the conversation I'm having. And the feedback I'm getting back from people is, I disagree, there needs to be voice acting. And I don't, I don't know what that is. I don't, what, what are you telling me? That we, that it's perfect and that you don't want, it, it never feels flat to you. That every bit of story and setting and event, it's all fully filled in and fleshed out and it's perfect. That's what you're telling me? Because I don't believe it's perfect. And so that's my, my response. So yeah, I don't know. I, I guess I just, can, I don't know. I wish I could explain an idea to people without them thinking it has to be black and white, you know? That there's a little bit of variance in there. This is nice. This is a really populated map right now, yeah. So anyway, that's a that's a that's a chunk of the feedback I've seen so far, but I only just put the video up, so we'll see. Um but yeah, uh It's a weird video because it's actually um to tell you guys the truth, it is a tiny slice of a much bigger video project that I've been working on. That whole video, that's an hour long conversation. That whole slide, um, Google Slides, that is actually essentially about five or six cells on a, oh, I definitely want Technobabble and shit back for this. It's about five or six cells on, um, on a like 300 cell spreadsheet that I've got. Which is uh, a project I've talked about before. It's kind of like a fan fiction project um, for funsies. Jeez, I can hardly hear the game at the moment. Have I have I made it too quiet <laughs> and too weird? I mean, it's very ambient. We're getting the echo valve, right? We're hearing echo valve. Um, the big project is uh, it's like a fan fiction of the whole game. It's like, okay, I'm a time traveler. You know, I'm not saying I'm better than the devs or anything like that. It's like, it's like, um, it's like, imagine you could go back in time with all the hindsight and all the, all the understanding of everything that ever happened with Guild Wars. What is the perfect Guild Wars? What, what if every decision was always brilliant, you know? So like, like, uh, remember they did a, uh, an update with traits, uh, changes where you can get traits in the open world. And people hated it, and 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 it got removed again later. You know that was a huge update. You can look at the information on Wiki about that update, and there's pages and pages of it. Really, a lot of work went into it, and the whole thing got thrown in the bin. Right? Look at stuff like the classic defiant system, which eventually got thrown in the bin for break bars. There's a ton of things that have happened over the years that were just a waste of time. I would even argue stuff like the China release, uh, some of the. Uh, feature pack stuff. So anyway, if you had hindsight and you knew, and now like I'm kind of advocating we move away from their their idea for raids and stuff. And the strikes are actually what are perfect. So the idea is it's a fan fiction. If you were going to redo Guild Wars, so it's a video that's like everything. It's like every patch. It's like was this good? Was this bad? How would you reconfigure this? And it's stuff like um, on the voice acting topic. It's stuff like okay, I believe. That in 2012, they shouldn't do a unique voice for every race and every gender. What they should do is give the players a choice of like four voices. There's the the adult voice, there's the youthful voice, there's the grumpy voice, and there's the cute voice, right? There's four voices. Those four voices go across all the races. Now that's a step back, don't get me wrong, that's a step back to do that, but it also now makes um, new races possible because the, the, the new races would just use those voices and stuff. So you know, it's like trade-offs and stuff, it's like long-term things, like how can how can you tweak and, and change things? And that's what that that is, but that's like the entire game history. 
It's like a decade of Guild Wars 2 where you, where they could have done something different. And it's like changing the story. It, it, it's keeping the story the same, all the major beats. But it's like reordering things and stuff. Like it's suggesting that, um, you know, Heart of Thorns probably works be better as the second expansion, not the first expansion. That way you get more time with Traherne. So Traherne dying at the end of Heart of Thorns has more weight. And uh, you also get more time with the mystery about the true nature of the Silvari. You get more time with the Pale Reavers and stuff. You know, so like it, it's all it's that kind of stuff. It's like reshuffling Guild Wars and, and you know, so it's just like a fan thing. Right. And I'm just kind of writing away on it. And anyway, um, that as a very small part of that project, there were a couple of like cell. It's listed out as this enormous spreadsheet. Basically, I had some cells and I was like, you know what? A lot of what I'm getting at here when I'm talking about like my hindsighted living world. It's like, this is actually just what I want for season six. This is actually just what I want for the game. And I kind of thought to myself, you know, the devs are probably going to be talking about season six soon. Um, so I should get these thoughts out there now before it's all lost. So I made today's video. And it's just a tiny little part of this bigger project, which I don't know whether I'll ever properly share with the world because it's just... You know, it's just this amorphous, massive blob of information that I, I'm not sure is really valuable in any way. Um, or at least, it, it's probably just too long, it's too verbose or something. It's also useless and pointless, because, you know, I don't have a time machine. None of us do. But it's like, there's some other, like, another example of a cool trade-off is like, um, I have in there... You know, the game shouldn't have released with heavy, medium, light armor distinctions. Like, you get a little bit of flavor out of that. But if they actually just avoided that from the off, outfits never had to be invented, town clothes never had to be taken away, cultural armor could have continued to be supported as, like, meaningful economic uh, drop-ins. Because right now, the big thing with the current system is if they're going to do something like cultural armor, it's split by two axes, right? It's, um... It's not just a set of cultural armor, it's a unique set of cultural armor based on heavy and then medium and then light, so it's three, times by five races, so it's 15. Let alone if you want to do multiple tiers, like they did at launch, which actually went from 15 to 30 to 45, and it's just this massively exploding thing. But, uh, you know, if they just didn't have that, di that distinction, there's also other little things in the modern era of the game, stuff like, you know, if you're a spectre, one of the Mesmer masks, light armor masks, looks perfect for Spectre, but because of this like arbitrary bounding, banding of the um, the armor sets, it doesn't really make any sense, you know. Now, was there uh, break bars at this guy? Because I'm like sigil of paralyzation and all that. I think I'm fine. So yeah, you know, it's stuff like that. It's stuff like that. Jesus Christ, where's that? Oh, that was my Warhorn Five, was it? So yeah, by the way, over the weekend, oh, we had a donation. Friggin' Paco, thanks, man. Dude, $50. I hope you had a nice weekend too. He says, good evening. I just watched your point list uh, for what you'd like to see in season six, including moving away from calling it a season, which I support. Thank you. Yeah, that was another little point I had there at the end. There's so much to talk about. I fully intend on leaving many comments to share my thoughts. Please do. I mean, really, I'll, I'll be reading all of them. I mean, the first thing I do when I've finished making this episode of Let's Play is I'm going to go read <laughs> what people have been saying. Um, thank you, man. That's really, really nice of you. Thanks very much. What was I saying? Oh, yeah, yeah. So over the weekend, I uh, I did one of these. Gang Wars of Echovald. I actually loaded into a completely empty map. I wasn't like wooden potatoes. I wasn't with spuds. I wasn't doing any of that. I just came to this map. There was no tag. There was no one around. The boss was about to spawn. And I tagged up myself. I went to LFG and said, Gang War. And, um, and I stood here spamming quickness and showing people how to do the mechanic. Like, I would walk to the rubble and I'd say, Stand with me. Like, I manually type. I don't often type, right? But I was actually typing to people and saying, Over here, over here, over here. And it was, it was a map that I thought was going to fail. And then we actually beat it. Like, and I genuinely felt like a, a hero. It was awesome. I was like, yeah, I actually, I think I might have got this map to win this when they wouldn't have otherwise. Which was really cool. I did a similar thing at Sai Tung as well. And I gotta say, the Sai Tung meta, guys. Wow. That scrapper, he really kicks ass. We almost wiped on Sai Tung, one of these random pug runs. Almost wiped. He was, 
the amount of bodies that were around at the end, I, I actually got defeated there and had to revive all. It was a real, real mess, and I was very impressed with that. Um, so yeah, I did a bit of that. What else did I do over the weekend? I didn't play well versus well this weekend, as you can see, unlike last weekend. I don't know. We'll see if Arena has any plans for World vs. World PvP. It gets me a bit more inter interest in them. But uh, you'll notice actually in my uh, video about Living World Season 6 and all my desires about the future of the game, I didn't talk about PvP or World vs. World, not for one lick. Now, the reason I did that is because of what I just said a second ago. This big project I talked about, where I'm like thinking about the whole game and like hindsighting the whole game, the one thing that's not in it is World vs. World and PvP. Not that I don't have opinions, not that I didn't have past loves, particularly for PvP, but I think my takes on those now are so controversial that they're completely at odds with the rest of the player base. And I wouldn't presume to put my takes on those in any kind of thing. Like, uh, what I really think the best version of World vs. World is, is <coughs> just a very wild idea. And my, uh, my, my thoughts about PvP at this point as well are they're just a bit depressing, to be honest. And basically, my take here is that, um, you know, PvP's there to be an economical area of the game. It had potential to be the best part of the game. But that's, that, that, that potential was squandered. I think at this point they've telegraphed an interest in PvE more than anything else. And I think um, token updates for PvP are all that I'd actually recommend at this point. In the other project, I kind of have a bit more discussion about putting the cart before the horse and not for forcing esports, and maybe even not even including Heart of the Mist at launch. Like, they openly admitted publicly that they considered the Heart of the Mist to be a, a glorified beta by the time of launch in August 2012. So you might advocate cutting it, but again, they're kind of controversial takes. The big controversial take I have about cuts is I, I still believe there shouldn't have been Zaitan at launch. Zaitan should have been season one. So that's a whole thing for me, that Zaitan season one thing you guys might have heard me talking about before. I have a lot of that in that video. Obviously that's got nothing to do with season six or whatever. But you know, that's a similar thing. You might say the same for PvP. You know, in a perfect world, I honestly, in my heart of hearts, I think that if, if ArenaNet wanted a competitive PvP game, it should have been a separate product. It can be the same IP, but a separate a separate product completely. Same for a world game. If they want to have like, um, oh god, what's it called? What's that sci-fi game that's literally just world versus world of the game? Man, all the uh, protection. Okay, I just need to focus on Scepter 3 more. I can't remember what it is. Anyway, they should have a dedicated game of that. Again, same IP. Have it as a Tyrion IP product, but it's its own game. I kind of actually, to tell you the truth, I think that that's the, the, the real answer to all of this. But planet side, thank you. Planet side. There you go. If Arena Net wants a planet side, then then do planet side. Don't don't crowbar it into your MMO. You know, leverage this IP and this game's brand recognition and all that kind of shit. But anyway, that's all just hindsight in 2012. And it's potentially useful information if they were ever going to make a Guild Wars 3, but I don't know whether they ever will. Why do I feel like I have specific aggro from that guy over there? Oh, well, there you go. That's the double boss is dead. What is Zunra? You kind of called late. Zunra is a spirit of Shingji that is missing, and we're going to do a side quest in a minute to bring her back to life. Um, among other side quests. I just named today's episode on that because that's the thing I'm most excited about. But I've only just started, so we'll get there later. Oh, um, it looks like uh, some of you guys are going to bed already as well. Anyway, yeah, hi, hi to everyone here in the live chat. So there won't be any uh, anything too dangerous at this point. I still don't know. I, I, I kind of want to go to the Golem and bench Harbinger. I mean, it's so weird, but I can't figure out if... if, if I'm, I'm putting a lot of effort into my Out of Shroud skill execution, and I don't know whether it's actually necessary, because I leave Shroud early. Basically, I've just got to figure out that one detail. Is leaving Shroud early t so that I can get to these other cooldowns to my benefit, or is it better to just spam the autos and the twos? I don't know, and I really kind of want to go to the golem to figure that out. As weird as that is, I'm very golem-averse. But I kind of want to know. 
anyway. Because I haven't set up arc or anything at this point in the expansion. Maybe by the end of uh, these final final parts that would have happened. I love this phase where we jump that drop, drop down from on top. So good. Sorry to this thief who put venoms up and they've already expired before we get to the next phase. I mean, I think one thing I think is certainly true is in the open world, standing in here for as long as possible, where I'm overflowing quickness on all, see, all these other players around. Like, look at all these players. I can only hit five per tick. So if I'm like shuffling like this and changing the five people that are closest to me and overflowing more quickness onto essentially ten targets, etc., I'm sure that's got to be a good thing. The funny thing about Harbinger is, even with the super low HP, I just don't ever feel uh, squishy. Uh, WP, why do you think they won't do a Guild Wars 3? Uh, this is a conversation I've had a great many times. Um, man, watching all that confusion tick there was so satisfying to me. I, I I don't know. They might. Look, here's the thing with me and Guild Wars 3. For 10 years, I said, no Guild Wars 3. It's not necessary. You know, when people are talking about it all around the Season 4 era and stuff, it's just insane to me. It's insane to me to think that you'd need a Guild Wars 3. Especially earlier. It's just crazy. You know, we're not in the 90s anymore. We're not in the 2000s anymore. I think MMOs have proven that once you've got one, you can have it forever. I really think they've proven that. So, I always was arguing against it. I think, at this point though, I actually do like Guild Wars 3 as an idea, because I think they've jumped the shark on like too many things. I think rewards are really messy, I think that like, the, the games, I think there are certain things that Guild Wars has done, it can't go back on now, it's taught its community that certain things are good when they're not good and that the community won't ever accept anything else without a fresh start. I think there are a lot of really good reasons to do Guild Wars 3 now. And I've been saying that. Actually, around the Icebridge Saga, I started to think that. I started to think, okay... Well, no, not around the Icebridge Saga. Around the collapse of the Icebridge Saga, I started to think that. Now, the great irony is, it seems to me that now ArenaNet thinks the way I used to think, and they want to stay with Guild Wars 2, so I, I don't know for sure. So, you know, if, if they're saying Guild Wars 2 is it, then I guess I'm on for, along for the ride, but um, I, I, I do believe in a Guild Wars 3, I have to say, I do believe in one. And I think there are certain things that Guild Wars 2 might have really, uh, really fallen apart on, but, you know, you never know, and what, what do I really know? But I will say, I used to think it was an abominable idea, not so much anymore. Okay, we're vulnerable to claps now, by the way, so we've got to be careful. So just stay on my tag. This is what I was doing, ready? I was doing this. All caps, local chat, every time, I would just say, on me. And I'd do it early as well. I'd do it after the first junk that came down. Even if it was in an inopportune place, I'd do it on the first junk to come down. So like here, I'm going to it straight away. Now, it might be um, a bad idea sometimes, right? Because people might run really far when they didn't need to run at all. Like, I understand that. But I'd rather the safety. So. This is definitely a fight to be ranged at, by the way. I couldn't imagine how annoying this would be to melee on this fight. So annoying. So here, it's there straight away, so I'm just going straight away. And I just do this again. I'm glad they don't spam suppress me on this. They're so, so aggressive with spam suppress. Out of range, really? On, um... I should have been in Shroud on that phase, I think, probably. On males, like with people getting in the spot club. When you suggested the same thing two to three months before, you said it's a horrible idea to go to Guild Wars 3. To a certain extent, it kind of depends on how in tune I am with what they're doing and, like, um... What move I'm in, I guess. 
But I can promise you, my, my general vibe has always been... Oh, shit, I fucked up because I'm looking at chat. I've actually got myself and possibly everyone else killed. <laughs> from from getting distracted there. Um, I promise you, my general vibe has been... For years, I thought it was a terrible idea. And the most recent year, two years or so, I've seen the merits of it. It also helps that I've been playing a lot of other new games. Um, and just seeing how incredible stuff is. So, the other thing I was doing this weekend, guys, is when I wasn't playing Guild Wars, I've been playing... Um, first of all, me and Kerry tried Dying Light, and it's it, it really did disappointed us. Um, and she was like, look, I watched a Let's Play of another zombie game, a recent zombie game. Um, and it had a really good story. It was a PlayStation exclusive, and it's come to Steam as of last May. It's it's here. And she bought me this game, and she said, play this. We don't need... You know, the great thing about Dying Light is it's co-op. But she was like, play this. She was like, okay. Um, and it's awesome. It's such a good game. It's uh, Days Gone. I don't know if any of you guys know about Days Gone. But, you know, I play, like, when you get to modern games and you look at how just utterly gorgeous they are and how well realized a lot of that stuff is, I can't help but get excited about, you know, a fresh start that's more technologically with it, let's say, for Guild Wars. But, yeah, I, I've, I've been playing Days Gone this weekend. Uh... If you guys want a general sense of what it's about, I, d I don't know how deep I am in it, really. I I I'm pretty pretty up with it at this point, I think. It's basically Daryl Simulator from The Walking Dead is a description I heard, which I think is brilliant. So it's motorbiking. I think if you're American, you'll really love it as well, because like that freedom, that Wild West sense of rebirth in, in, a, in a, zombie ap a zombie apocalypse is a huge thing. But it, I think it, it, it's interesting because it's very interested in American history and also uh, American politics and like you can kind of get a, a real vibe from it, you know. Basically, what I think they're implicitly pointing out is that like you know, like doomsday preppers, like people obsessed with the Second Amendment and their gun freedoms and you know hunting and all that kind of shit. You know that kind of like mindset that you find like the uh, uh, in certain areas of America it basically makes the observation that these people <laughs> and a lot of them are fucking crazy these are the guys that are surviving let's see what kind of society they try to build you know and I, it's it's a really interesting observation you know like it's not very hollywood let me put it that way and i quite like it it feels fresh you know a zombie genre is so overdone it actually feels like they have some interesting commentary, you know. Um, like one of the center characters you meet early on is like this whack job, like talking complete shit on the radio, and it's good. Um, so anyway, I'm having a lot of fun, and the characters in that I can really, really get into them. And you know, everything I complimented about Anka in End of Dragons. Sort of how natural and smooth her, her voice delivery is and stuff. Oh, everyone's, like, directed so well in Days Gone. They're all so real and just so... Oh, my God. And all the movement that they do in, the, in like, the cutscenes and stuff. It feels very Uncharted as well. You know, I've always complimented Uncharted 4, where you have that moment where you're... I'll just be very uh, bland about it, but you're in a car with your wife. And you're really not sure if, you're, if your marriage is going to work out. And you're just driving through this utterly gorgeous place with these ancient ruins around. But you're thinking about your wife and your failing marriage. And there's just like this music playing. And it's like weirdly hollow. It's just like this really, really profound, awesome feeling. There's kind of a moment that I've had like that on Days Gone where they stop for a second. And I'm just riding on my motor motorbike through the, through the wilderness of Oregon and the mountains in the background. And they're just playing a song, and it's like, it was that moment I was like, wow, this game's really doing things, eh? And, you know, I want stuff like that for Guild Wars. You know, even, even just the visuals of that game, it's like, Jesus, look at the lighting engine. Like, you'll actually look at the mountains, like, light casting across them as the sun rises and sets in the sky and stuff. Like, so naturally and so realistically. I mean, it's unbelievably cool. So, yeah, anyway, 
that's been a, a thing of mine this weekend. In fact, after this stream, I'll probably go find Kerry <laughs> and play a bit more. There we go. That was my fifth one. That's it. I've done the meta five times now, so that's it. I am the honorary Kestrel, and they have given me a Jade Tech lockbox. Plus a bunch of writs of the Echovald Wilds. Still haven't really spent my stuff, but hey. Days Gone takes place in Oregon. Yeah, yeah. It does. And it is very clued in to its its setting. It's not like an accident or a quiet thing that's in Oregon. It's like really... You know, and it will talk about like American history and like the 1700s and 1800s and stuff. Like it's cool. You live in Portland, Oregon. Bigfoot constantly terrorizes the town. That's cool, man. <laughs> That's cool. You guys would definitely get a kick out of it. I'll tell you that. It gets a ring in endorsement from me. Anyway, all right, let's do our strike mission, shall we? Um, well, look, we're in the right area. Look at this. So we're going to do Anka. I'm missing one player. So again, anybody watching this in the live chat on this episode of the Let's Play, if you would like to come and fight Anka in the strike mission, it's the daily... You're more than welcome to. I want to squeeze this in before reset, and then I'm gonna uh, we're gonna get back on Zunra, and we're gonna get back on these side quests. We're gonna help House of Helter actually first. I'm gonna go speak to Danica and hopefully get some more voice acting from the commander. Even though I hate it and I'm the enemy of voice acting, and I want it all to be removed from the game 100%. Didn't you hear me in my recent video? Uh -huh. There's a backpack you can only get as a drop from this event, which you can then upgrade to an Ascended version. Really? That's cool. The meta. Yeah, still got a lot to learn about that stuff. I've seen, like, five backpacks at the Royal Palace, five from the Canark coins, or four from the Canark coins? I'm not sure what else they've done. Anyway, into the junkyard we go. So I'm going to change this a little bit, because she doesn't have many break bars, right? I'll oh, screw it. I'll just keep my build the same. All I'm hearing is WP is a nerd who likes to read. <laughs> you forgot Days Gone had been ported to PC, Tulip? It's a really good port, too. Like, feels brilliant. Yeah, this is North America, not EU, guys. North America. I'll, I'll go to LFG. Not to take opportunities away from spuds, it's just I don't know... How much weight in me we might... Well, I uh, maybe I'll wait a second. We'll probably fill, won't we? Your favourite part of the House Who Helps a Collection is that Danica has a good voice actor now instead of whatever mess of a V.A. she had in fact. You know, I've always been familiar with the joke about Danica, but I feel a bit weird. Like, I think she was alright. She only had a couple of lines. I haven't really looked at Danica's lips yet, but I used to love that she had, like, one black lip and then one, like, really red lip. I thought that looked so cool as a teenager. I should check out the back pieces from Club Canuck. I think I did already. I think in the last part of the LP on Friday, I think I did. Okay, so we're just waiting for this thief. Look at all these harbingers. Well, we'll spread them out. Uh, we got any alacrity anywhere? There's literally no alacrity source on any of these players, is there? Like, none. Zero alacrity. Uh, two harbingers per subgroup. The catalyst is even more quickness. The reaper doesn't even care about the quickness because he gives it to himself for free. And we got a thief. Our comp is awful. <laughs> Hopefully the the tempest can do well. We don't even have a support for the second group. This is a terrible, terrible comp. I just want to be clear to everyone. I'll just... Oh, here we go. We got... Uh, I guess this guy's coming on Renegade, so he's fixing some alacrity for one of the uh, subgroups. We got all these auto-attackers, or people who are already giving themselves quickness anyway. <laughs> it's pretty funny. So, hold on. Ranger, d Ranger doesn't have a way to tech into alacrity, right? Or does... Uh, wait, does Untamed have an alacrity thing? I got, I got, to, I've really got to refresh myself and all that stuff, you know. It's amazing how quickly I've forgotten all that. I played all of them and really focused during the betas, but there, there you have it. Was Danica's original voice actor Kyle's mum from South Park? I don't know. I don't. I couldn't tell you. I'm gonna throw up a ready check here, guys. If you're feeling confident, I'm feeling confident. Are 
yeah, Warrior and Ranger have no alacrity or quickness. Well, they have self sources of quickness, but yeah, the AoE thing. It's planned for summer. You're guessing Ranger will be quickness and Warrior alacrity. Do you think alacrity will come in on the banner rework? Yeah, I think Untamed might have personal alacrity, but I couldn't tell if it was group or not. We're just waiting for End Master to uh, ready up. I can respect the um, Signal of Undeath, by the way. I think that's a really good idea. Oh god, why have I changed? I haven't changed my build correctly here. Let's do it this way. Alright, there we go, we're ready. She also voices Izzy in Digimon, that's awesome. Dude, I haven't watched that Di the early Digimon seasons for so long. But I remember probably when I was like 16, 17 re-watching them. And really loving that scene at the end with the harmonica. At the end of one of the seasons. Like the early adventures. When the adventure was coming to a close. And one of them just plays a harmonica and they look out over the digital world. Knowing that they're going to return to their old lives. It's just really melancholy. It's brilliant. Alright, down we go. Let's see what we got. I haven't really put any quality of life on my build at all, so... Well, we got an AFK, so I'm going to wait here. Because this guy's just going to get kicked out or killed or something. I don't know what. This is Tetra we're waiting on. Sorry, not Tetra. Terra. I was going to say, calling yourself Tetra and then obviously Tetra the new character is pretty cool. Tetra's kind of a cool name for an Ellie as well. If you're thinking like the five elements. Well, four elements plus arcane or something. All Signet Spite Reapers OP. I don't agree with all spirits, but I do agree that, yeah, um, Signet Reaper is excellent. Quality of life level is insane on Signet uh, Reaper. I've been recommending it for a long time. Oh, I should have opened with the quickness so that I can get through these animations better. There we go, and we can get the big transfer there. Oh, I quite like how I have a ton of alacrity and stuff here. And I was definitely getting the um, spirit value. Oh, God, yeah. I don't know what, what to say here. Because uh, we, we need more support. We have one Tempest. Wait, is the Tempest DPS? They are. They're not even... A, it's not even a support Tempest. Oh, we're so dead. We don't have any support. I'm GGing this. Uh, we're going to have to give this up or people are going to have to reswap. I literally can't. I only took this Harbinger into the thing. GG this. We have... There is absolutely no point in North America. You trying this. We have taken 10 people in with absolutely zero support. I assumed it was a support Tempest that was going to try and deal with it all on their own. But yeah, they're playing... Even they're playing damage. You hadn't even attacked yet. You don't know why she focused on you. Or maybe because she was standing away. Um... Alright, well, never mind. Let's not do it then. That's fine. If we can't swap, if people only want to play DPS on NA, that's okay. We can just... I'll, I'll just do the side quest. I'll keep the squad as is. Maybe we can look back later. But uh, Or I could leave if you guys really want to do it. But I'll, I'll, I'll go do the side quest. It doesn't matter. It's only daily. I'd rather not waste a bunch of time or have to get into specific games of kicking individuals and stuff. I'd rather not do that. So let's just play ahead, man. Right. The... the um, sorry, Jesus. The fate of House Zoo Helts. I keep trying to talk while I'm drinking. Work with Valyria to discover the fate of House Zoo Helts of Echovald. Now. She was going to meet us in Mori Village. Because... Well, that was just it. We, we got a bunch of tapestry shreds, and she said, hey, we're going to just go meet up here, right? So, so far, what I really want to know... Actually, I'm going to leave this squad, because it's going to keep the pop-up while you guys are still standing around in there. So, what I'm thinking I'll do... Oh, what I'm wondering about is, right now, we're just getting tapestry shreds. And it's like, well, what do they do with that? How does that help the population or bring them together? So, Mori Village. I do not see a collection icon there. We are looking for Valeria. Or Valeria? Valeria? I haven't looked at patch notes, by the way. Over the weekend, were there a bunch more updates? I, I kind of like this. I sort of get back in and I've got this fresh sense of, like, there might not be a bunch of bugs. Yeah. 
The thing is, this is a big village. She could be anywhere. I'm wondering if I should just go high and look down first. But I'll do a sweep on the bottom floor first. Oh, someone in the live chat saying second floor. Okay, I'll go look there. Uh, putting this tapestry gives all Kurziks around the world a magical fertility boost and giant spiritual beacon that appears near the world. Is that a joke? A spiritual fertility boost? Is that actually going to be written here? Is that a joke? <laughs> oh, this shrine. Ryan Greyfeather. I'm sure they were at the area or something. Actually, Ryan Greyfeather might have been at um, the roost, as it was called, in the city. Okay, it is a joke. <laughs> yeah, I was surprised. <laughs> second floor, but what? what is second... Is that American second floor or British second floor? Because British second floor is third floor. Because we're crazy. Curious youngster. I'm going to turn some of the other sound effects on now. Fill the invaders full of arrows before the Ministry of Security even got the memo. Hmm. Mika. Oh, the collection's bugged for you. That sucks. In that nest are the boss. I really like the way she says balls. I don't know why. <laughs> One thing I, I didn't really compliment in any of my reviews of End of Dragons or Conversation about it, everyone's so happy and lovey and so, like, sweet and nice and warm. You know, this is like the Apocalypse expansion, right? But it's not got that vibe at all. It's just such, a, like, a happy, sweet kind of place. And I, I don't necessarily dislike that. I think it's mismatched. I quite, I quite enjoy it, but I do think it's mismatched. I don't know though. The other side of it is it, the game was so depressing in POF, like it was a really depressing expansion. So I kind of like that we get like this very fresh sense here. What's going on under here? Oh, just a brotherhood listening to us. This music's really nice. My god, I keep looking at fast and thinking it's you, but it's not fast. Dude, I surely I'm on the ground floor again. We stopped the apocalypse already, isn't that why everyone's so cheerful? I mean, if you want it to be, I'm, I, I, it's a nitpick I'm really discussing here. It's not a real criticism. But I would also say that, you know, maps are free, frozen in time. So, no, this is this is the moment of the apocalypse right now. These Tengu, as you see them, there's a void encroaching and so on. I did have a comment where someone was furious at the story because they thought that all the uh, little, you know, all the void achievements you can get where you can go back and look, I complimented that and said that's awesome. But I, I did have, I did read a pretty cutting comment. Someone said, well, look, but they're all just comic relief, you know. It's like someone's stuck in the ground and they're like, poke it with a broom. <laughs> and they wanted it to be a bit grimmer. But I don't know. I think, I think I'm, I'm, I think I'm fairly satisfied about all that stuff with this x -Pack. I'm not satisfied with this right now, though. I hate this needle in a haystack shit. What? Uh, Valeria. Anyone see them? Anyone want to help out? Or are you just all hit content to eat popcorn and watch us while away the hours running in circles? Maybe over here? Did I not look closely enough here? There are a few grim runs, like the creepy child. Oh, I'm not sure I've seen that one yet. About blanket prices. Nothing useful. None of this has been useful. At least some of it's interesting. Look at the mini-map. There is an icon. It's on the southwestern corner. Are you serious? I didn't want to kill my Springer there, but just to get away from those Jade Brothers fighting me. There is an icon on the southwestern corner. Well, there's an elite spec icon. Sorry, that's southeast. Wait. All the way over here. It's at Mori Village. Southwest. Somewhere around here, right? POI. I'm not blind, am I? South, southwest in Mori. Go to the hero point. Bottom, south of hero point. 
Dude, there's no icon down there. What do you mean? Only on the minimap. There's not one on the minimap either. You think it's bugged? The uh, Zunra one was definitely bugged. This one was a bit better, I think. Well, anyway, you guys have explained pretty clearly. It's south of the uh, hero point, so let's go have a look, shall we? Oh my god, it's a proximity based icon. Just go near there. You're right, look at this. Oh no, I think it's levels, isn't it? It's height. It's there right now. There, look, 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 look. It's not appearing because I'm not high enough. As I go up the ramp, it appears. See here? This is the threshold here. If I click up a level, it doesn't work. I don't know if it's proximity, I think it's height based. Oh, that's so bad, though. Surely they see how bad that is, right? Like, I come here and I scan and I look for the icon and I don't see it. So I stop looking for it, you know. Plus, it's inconsistent in the first place. This is just chaos. Wouldn't it be funny if the icon disappeared again while I was done it? Here we go. Also, this is the ground floor, everyone. I sell five times as many as you're making. Mm-hmm. And then they'd be five times worse. Well, you find a way to automate the process a bit. It'd speed it up and <clears throat> result to be more uniform. You wouldn't have the occasional quirks. No. There's art in the imperfections and in the process. All right. Hello, Valeria. <clears throat> Gox, you made it. Have you been... So, yeah, sorry. It took me a whole weekend to make it, but I'm here. Have you been having any luck finding pieces of the tapestry? Seven of them, to be precise. That's good news. Uh, unfortunately, while I located a Master Weaver, his home, Mori Village, is currently beset with troubles. If you can help them, um, it will free him to help us. Okay, so we want to do the heart. Is that the idea? I like this. That's fine. I don't, mean, I don't mind being asked to replay the heart and stuff. God, I want to get some of these lake fish. Look how tranquil this is, guys. Look how lovely this is. What do you want? I want it to connect. Let's learn, uh, I want to help you live in a way, turn a place in the sky above the sky. Okay. I wonder if there are multiple good ways through that. Okay, here's the arrows. What else did I have to do? I had to go out into the, um, the swamp, I think it was. Jesus, those locusts. And there were some other things that I could do out there. Something like that, anyway. Was up north, this way. Maybe I can help. There. That's the outsider. Don't make eye contact. I like this. As an Asura, they haven't really made too many comments about me. But the Norn and the Silvari ones sound really good. This will be an interesting moment here as well, by the way. Whether, um... Oh my god, what, what? Why have I got such a problem with the game audio right now? It's like I'm just not settled with it. Like, for some reason, I can't get a, get a grip on it. Um, yeah, uh... Whether this is like a vanilla one where you just do the fighting and it's a lot quicker. I would rather all the other objectives be be the better things to do. So let's have a look. Yeah, we got, I got a message from Terra saying, hey, sorry, we didn't get your daily done. It's not a big deal. It's just a little daily strike. You know, if you don't have the comp, then you don't have the comp. Um, I'm happy to let that go. You know, and if people want to do it, you can just go to LFG and just... You know, the other strikes we've done so far, we just kind of got lucky that if we didn't instantly have the comp... Other people could swap stuff in, but you know, sometimes it happens. I, I and I can't be mad about it. I, I, I literally have one build that I have right now. I have Condi Quick. I have well, I also have Power Quickness, but why do I run it right? I have a Quickness build. That's it. You know, and if we just get unlucky and end up in a strike mission with four Harbingers, <laughs> it is what it is. You know, it's not a big deal. 
I'm not even sure if the daily strikes are that relevant, right? Just do each one once a week is sort of, sort of to me, looks like the bigger thing. Speaking about builds and speaking about power, let's swap. So let's see. How much credit do we get for killing this wallow? Really thinking of adding axe, by the way, instead of pistol. Taking that pistol off of this set. It gave me a bit of credit. Not an insane amount, actually. Have I heard char specific dialogue? Actually, no. I haven't. I've only, I heard about um, Silvari because I've heard that it repeats a lot and stuff. Non sounded interesting. There was also like just this furious guy, you know. My god, my comments, man. You know, I haven't talked at all about like wokeness or what all you lot consider politics to be at this point and all that stuff. I, I literally haven't had any discussion about it at all. But my comments are truly exploding. Uh with arguments between people about that kind of stuff. And anyway, some guy was mad about like <laughs> how woke his norn sounded or something because he was offended that okay. campers had assumed their height or something or that they've just what were they contest? saying they're going on about oh they've just You'll taken uh, Rules of the game are uh like I'll eastern visuals back. just to yeah, hackily yeah. paint on a bunch of Woke Western what ideology blah 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 and anyway in that comment he mentioned something about the norm But it sounded all right to me. I'm looking forward to uh, Doing new playthroughs more on alternate races than actually alternate uh, Builds at the moment I definitely want to do one on each character with uh, uh, one on each race. What really sucks about that? Oh, I can obtain the bow and arrows. This is really cool. What really sucks about that is list um, is also in Asura Wait, 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 not you. Where do I get a bow? Please give me a bow. Speak with Sire to get a bow. I assume this event will time out if I'm not quick enough about it. Yeah, so like Liz is an Asura too, so everyone's going to be talking about her in the same way that Gux was being talked about. I really like doing this as an Asura. I feel like for the main storyline, it's worked awesomely. No, that's not her. Why is there no telegraph for where this event starts? I did it on uh, the last part, didn't I? Jesus Christ. Well, there is a telegraph. I understand your Did that only just appear? Here we go. Arrow. Arrow. Nice. All right, let's do it. We've got a lot of work to do before I'm ready to be a Kestrel. I'm going to do it. So that, this is actually one of my favorite events in the whole expansion. I think this is really cool. This is also, also a weird thing where it's like they made this an event, but this is very close to being a full-blown adventure, isn't it? I mean, I guess it, it works better as an event, probably. As an adventure, it's just kind of this boring thing of like learning where all of the signs are. As an event, you can't repeat it so much. So you can't sort of learn it so quickly. Also, you're kind of just like actively doing it for the sake of doing it rather than trying to beat a clock. What does it even mean? Take some of the stress out of it. So maybe this is actually better, yeah. There we go. I think I'm doing pretty good here. Is this actually progressing the heart? I don't know. I haven't quite had a look here. It really makes me look at the environment in a whole new way, which I adore. You know, this, this it reminds me of... Um, no, it's not pushing the heart in any way whatsoever. It reminds me of launch with the um, the mini dungeon where you got to throw the rocks. Uh, in a Caledon Forest where you got to throw the rocks. Um, I think it's to like ring bells or ring gongs and it opens up that Hylic area. It just makes you look at the environment differently. And that's something Action Cam's always been great for. The question is, am I above a bunch of these? Oh, there's... Wait, the green X means I've already got it, right? Oh, maybe not. Oh, I got an achievement, too. Nice. Oh, we're destroying the, cont the Tengu contestants right now. I guess I am actually against the clock a little bit. My quiver is empty. Oh, the skill two's a jump. 
Let's get some arrows. There we go. Man, I don't want to beat up the villages and things. Yeah, the tears of Ill it it Is that how we say it? Yeah, that one. I really am very curious. Oh, I only got one arrow. Oh, let's go to the barrel. Did we get ten? Oh, well, we're done. Hey, I've got a whole mastery point for that achievement. What did I do that was so special, though? The outsider. And my Having the Guild Wars 1 music feels pretty good there, too. Hey, I did progress, actually. I think once I finished the heart, it gave me a big chunk. Show of respect. Salute. Oh, bow. It's bow, isn't it? I always go to the, like, the military side of it. Uh, I'd love to know more about your people. What can I answer? How should I be respectful? Hi, you're one of the outsiders, aren't you? People can change. So I don't have to use force? <laughs> the naivety of some of this stuff. <laughs> Let's bow. It's just like this very naive, sweet, like cartoony, happy, like mindset that the commander has. You were thinking the music remind you of Eye of the North? I, it is Eye of the North, isn't it? Or maybe is it? Is it Launch Guild Wars too? I feel like it's Eye of the North. It's weird. Some of that stuff's um, blurring together for me a little bit at this point, but you never know. The outer, outsiders always want something. Yeah, I just want to help you. Fulfill your for more of these blankets in the city, you know. death in I a positive way. I'll oh, speaking of that, I the other thing I did this weekend was I finally watched Dune. I really wanted to love that movie. What's the guy's name? Is it David Villainview or whatever? He did Blade Runner as well. Sire, I think it's I just, just um, one of your students in the forest. They away I think I he needs out. to make about a third of the film. Oh, and like he's no. a, he's Tell a bit you. like kind of how I felt about Tell Zack you. Snyder a bit too. You know, really, really so great like yes, cinema directors. Not right now. Visuals and, and like emotion and like kind of vibe. But really needs a counterweight, you know. Um, and I think June could have been really good there, but I, I don't really know the novels very well, so I don't quite know whether that style suited the kind of story that that franchise is trying to tell the whole time. But I, I don't know. It was interesting. I, 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 I'll definitely try the sequel as well, but I did find it a little bit, uh, little bit difficult to uh, stick with the whole time. Dennis, thank you. Dennis. And I'm sure I didn't say his name correctly. I'm sure I didn't, which is going to make me look like an ignorant bastard. There's never had a real conversation about film. Thank you. Look, I'm just going to bow at you. I just want my credit and then I'm out. Do you know what I mean? There you go. Impressionable youngster. They can make their Keep own away from this dickhead. There's nothing better than that <laughs> that chunk on the skill 2, the shotgun. I feel like people who truly enjoy shotguns in video games, they need to be playing Power Harbinger. Whoopsie. What do you want to know? What's an Aureen? I haven't read this before. Aureen isn't a what? She's a who? Aureen is an elder dragon. A nice one. Ooh! Isn't this lovely, everyone? She's a nice dragon. Like Su Wan. Or is she not nice anymore? Sue one is doing her best against forces she can't control. I see. So it's okay to do bad sometimes if it's better in the end. Oh, this is interesting. Eh, it would be interesting, but they've kind of boxed me in here. You know, it, there is not a simple answer to the question, do the ends justify the means, all right? There's actually a lot of really interesting conversation we can have there but look at how arena net handles this they just they they'll back you out by like creating such a shallow conversation you can't argue with it it's not okay to do bad but it is okay to fall short when trying to do good i get it i think really 
Alright, just have your spoonful of sh sugar, child. What about this one here? Yeah, I'll bow you. Brilliant! Now, I assume that we're happy now and we can put the tapestry shreds together. Seven. Oh, here we go. This is Master Kubo. He's going to help us get all reassembled without reducing them to tangible strings. Sorry, what the hell is wrong with me? Jesus Christ. This is Master Kubo. He's going to help us get all reassembled without reducing them to tangled strings. Tangible. Jesus Christ, dude. Blink and stop your eyes from blurring. Good to meet you, Master Kubo. Remarkably good condition. What? Some fraying and thinning, which is to be expected, but not too much patching. So, you think you can put it back together? I can, when we have all the pieces. There's still a chunk of the bottom left corner missing. Probably two pieces worth. Valeria, didn't you say this fabric reminded you of something your father had given you? But I'm not... I couldn't be... Oh, yes, yes. This definitely belongs. It wasn't as obvious because the part it was cut from is still missing. Since I can't do anything with this until we locate the last bit, you may as well hang on to it just a little longer. I'll take you up on that. Oh, this is awesome. This time they actually printed it in the log here so I can sort of reflect on it. <clears throat> So she might be a part of it. So she is gonna be. Is she gonna lead them into the future? Just one more piece, and apparently Armazu helps her. Huh? You have an idea where to find it? I do. Meet me at Arborstone. Okay. Is this gonna be another sub quest within the quest? I I fucking loved that. That they actually had like the overall quest and then like the whole secondary thing. So off to Arborstone. Thank you very much, Kubo. Right, let's get out of here. What is this? Dream Daddy Morgimoth is not a title that I have imagined giving him. <laughs> Someone calling Morgimoth our Dream Daddy. <laughs> uh, oh my god, I I had a really weird moment there. Do you know why I'm holding down tilt, popping my UI? It's because I was looking at the top right to see the green starburst and what I was doing next. It feels that much like I'm doing a normal quest, normal story journal. And I read that it said, report to your crew chief, Fronk. And I was like, what? This is race specific? And then I was like, no, no, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> it's clearly not that. What a mind blow that would have been. You're glad they've stopped being afraid of actual quests and opening the collections interfaces? Well, look, no, I, I don't think you're allowed to credit End of Dragons with that. I don't think that's right. Because they're not fearless. They haven't done anything to the UI to properly emphasize this stuff. And 99% of the people who are playing End of Dragons are not doing what this footage is right now. They're not doing these. So I don't, I don't think you're allowed to credit that. Also, it's not even that much of an innovation beyond what they were doing in the Ice Brood Saga. Or in Season 4. Certain bits of Season 4. It's it's better funded. They've, they've got voice acting and stuff in it. And it definitely plays better. Like, don't get me wrong. This, this is good. It's good. But I don't think you can credit them as like being fearless and doing it as a big thing yet. I mean, th there's definite work to be done. By the way, I'm not wearing an outfit anymore. I've been wondering why I look so weird. Am I? What is going on here? What are these clothes? That's not the Scourge's tendrils on my shoulders. They're all dyed really well. Oh, it's, uh, it is an outfit. It's just that it's the Astral Scholar outfit now. Oh, right, right, right. No, no, let's go back. Let's go. I was really mind blown there. I was wondering if that was like something I'd done in Arverstone. It put me into like Kurzik wear or something. All right, no, there we go. This is more like it. This is how we should be doing. I'll do what I must. Oh, hey, Mike. It's good to see you, dude. Cries and multiple fishing supplies and UMS. Yeah, I have to. Over these next five parts, I have to get to fishing. I've got to see. I was in Discord two nights ago, and a friend of mine was complaining that fishing has no place in the game. 
And I've really got to figure out, like, what, what is it? If it? Is it just for the sense of the titles? And if so, is that enough for people and all that kind of shit? I'm going to play it just because it's content, but I do want to see where it sits within Guild Wars. If it's just a, like, one and done collection with no way of hooking into the combat system or other meaningful game loops, I'm going to be a bit sad, I think. But we'll see. Valeria, hello. You got my letter? Yeah, hi. I did. You're looking for old fabric scraps? You making a quilt? It's Rama over there. What? Oh god, is he bugged? Oh. You got my letter? I did. Oh god. Okay, this is clear. You got my letter? Oh no! What is this? You're looking for Oh, fabric scrap. Okay, wait, 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 wait. We can fix this. We can fix this. It's all phased, right? It's all phased. So I can just character select and go back in. I think that this one's fixable, everybody. Don't you guys worry. I think Rama was probably just supposed to walk around the edge or something. And by doing this, I will get him to walk around the edge. You ready? Hello, Rama. Go on, walk over there, mate. Come on, I'll give you quickness. That'll help with your movement abilities. No, it won't. I'll splash you swiftness. Do I have a swiftness? I do. The elixir of anguish is swiftness. Go on, bro. Oh, son of a bitch. Okay, okay, okay. What about Kuba? You got my letter? I did. You're looking for old fabric scraps? You making a quilt? Very old fabric scraps. Whoa. Old and probably precious. Do you have anything? I'm like not going to move. I. Uh, yeah, I do. My grandma gave it to me the day I joined the force. It's kind of my good luck charm. Oh, show him, Kubo. I've stitched together all that you brought me before. Just two missing pieces. Rama, look at mine. They're a matching set. Yes. That's because our ancestors were some of the only survivors of House Suheltzer. So, Grandma's stories... Weren't just stories. And that makes us family. Distant, but yes. Cousins more than a few times removed, but if you go far enough back, we probably share some roots. Roots here, with the people who once lived and breathed and died here. That's... Um, yeah, that, that's... It's a lot to take in. Yeah, I think I just need to sit with it for a while. Wow, I didn't think that uh, Rama was going to be a part of this in any way. The fate of House of... Wait, 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 is that it? Is that the end? We actually finished one of the quests now, did we? Wait. So hold on, is that like a season six kind of hint story now? I, sh you know, I should do a whole separate video that is a story speculation video on season six. <laughs> I think a lot of people are going to click that video I made today, thinking like, "Oh, WP is going to talk to me about story. I love WP when he's talking about story. Oh, what are, what plots are we going to have?" And then I just hit them with a bunch of crap they're not interested in, or they hate my takes. <laughs> And um, so maybe I should do that. So that's it. That's Rama has Kursic heritage. That's sort of the takeaway there at the end. I want to go back to Danica. Oh, I heard, by the way, as well, Noct told me about this. I think it was Noct. Um, the tipping thing. If you tip gold, it's tipping the bar. If you're tipping Canark coins, it's tipping the band. Which seems like a bug to me. But the way it's currently implemented means that if you want to if you want to do this, fan of the band. No, not not that. The other one. It's like 5000 gold to beat at the moment. Which is nuts. So I assume it's bugged and you're meant to be able to do each at each and it just depends what device you go to. Right now, it doesn't make any sense. But yeah, that is the idea. Oh, this was something I did over the weekend, too. I did Arborstone Volta. I cheesed it, guys. The uh, This one here, Arbor Arborstone Volta Extraordinaire. I cheesed it. Sorry. But I did. I got on a sky scale, and I got all the possible blessings in one. Um, And then I, I grinded, air quotes, a couple more. So I'm at 129 out of 500 now. 
I did like two little runs. And I figured to myself, I can just do a couple of runs each day and it will be done in no time. So Instead of trying to do it all at once, I'll just do it every now and then. I think I did it while I was watching... Uh, I think it was a compilation of Bunk Moreland from The Wire. From the wire. <laughs> Bunk is like my favourite character. <laughs> so, uh, and YouTube's got like this 40 minute video and I think I just watched that while I ran some. Okay, so... So we're done. Oh look, there is more. There's even more here. Wow, and 200 points in the archery contest. That's going to take fucking ever. 200 points! The event doesn't even come up there regularly. We could try the Vassberg Armory thing. No, no, I want to do more of the quests anyway. All I'm trying to do here is verify that I'm done with that whole quest. I think I am. There's plenty of events I haven't seen yet. But, oh, well, three events that I haven't seen yet. Oh, yeah, because I could instant finish the uh, the relic thing. Which scaled so terribly. There's some raptor runners, too. I would love to do these. Raptor runner, spring of fling. They were really fun in uh, Saitung. Okay, so... Uh, looking back. That's Marjorie, and i got to beat the meta, so I can't finish that. Character growth. Ah, oh, this one. Right, i got to get a bell from the children at Saitung. Good little children stay in their beds at night, but I have to do the event so that they'll give me the bell. I know where the little kid is, I just don't know where the bell is. So there's actually two opportunities um, when the event was small, sorry. But there's actually two events, uh, two objectives right now. I'm guessing that that's to give me a little bit of leeway. Here we go, this might be good. Use cleansing resonance obtained from bells to cleanse the spirits. Maybe this is the event that I wanted. So what do we got here? We nice. ring the bell. I could picture us here. Cleansing resonance mm. only works on the villagers' the spirits and friendly. those within the spirit realm. Used to help Lots cleanse spirits and set them free. Mm -hmm. I've never done this. We'll need to keep that I think we saw this on the. Um... Uh, their pre-release stream. Didn't you? Well, okay, so there's lots to fight. Where does the uh... where does the special action come in? You? Can I cleanse you? Can only be used on the spirits, but I can't target the spirits. Nature. <laughs> Do I need to find a way to phase? Is that the idea? Ring a bell and then phase. Or Oh. Gotta like power. Obviously someone else was hitting that. And this might not have scaled up that heavily, but it was pretty good. The event is a toy event where you get in the addition, toys back to the little kid in the harbour that only the happens during the day. If it can oh look, they fixed this. Music, Minister Preter has expressed interest in turning the ruins into a memorial. And she won't do it. No this, she's telegraphed properly now. It looks like this Even event's fixed. With all the telegraph bugs. Spirits left. Two out of twenty. So I've probably just got... Oh, here we go. There's some spirits. But again, they're not targetable. Oh, no, they are. These ones are. Let's see then. Aha! You destroy... Everything. Well, that's removing individual stacks off of her. There we go. I got rid of her. She said, I'm not bad for a newbie riches. Is she now going to go into the next event? It's this way. Right, and now she goes off to do the whole thing, which we saw multiple times. So let's not worry about that. Right, character growth. So the other thing is the tea house. Lady Kanda in Kaineng. Lady Kanda's tea house. Oh, God. But how... Jade Tech. The Cobble Wards. The Grub Lane. It's none of the hearts. Uh, 
A tea house would be like high up, I think. Tay Jin's estate. South substation. Minsec headquarters. Ah, the Red Duck Tea House. It is the Red Duck. Okay, I think it's here. Let's go do that. Let's get a taxi as well, because I do not know my way up. It seems like every time I'm going here, I'm going to that area of the ministry, uh, of the city, and I, I can never know the easiest way. Which is probably a good thing. Sponsored by the Ministry of Interior. Sign up now. Okay. Sign up now. Oh, I'm good. Oh, speaking of void. I can't see. There's some void shit going on here. Look at this. Do you guys think that in season six they'll do some lingering void stuff? Oh god, maybe I really should have just made that video about story. I've probably got a good six or seven big topics I can talk about. Like loosely. And then maybe follow them up with full on Guild Wars mysteries. These guys are not even trying to fight me. Look at that. I don't know why, but it was satisfying as all hell blowing them up. Alright, take me out. That's it. Let's go. They are highly unstable and likely to explode if not handled with care. You like the fact that they made Kainin kind of hard to navigate? It makes it feel bigger and more imposing. Yeah, I mean, and I've never had a problem with that. It's weird though because people hate tangled depths, you know, and people hate being confused. They hate a loss of clarity. There's, there's kind of a thing about. Forget it. People don't always want to be super engaged by an uh, MMO. I think a lot of times dues? people just kind of want to turn off their brain and it's nice and simple and they know where they're going and they know Hello, what's citizen. up, you know. And they want to relax. And t it tends to be in the open world, that's where that feeling is the strongest. So if you if you ask too much of people in the open world, I think that it gets a bit, a bit dodgy. Hi. That's why it's probably also a bit dodgy how difficult the Heart of Thorns mobs were on release as well. As fun as it is when you're like really keyed in, but a lot of people aren't. So I don't know. Because of course a map named Tangled Depths would be easy to navigate. Well, I mean, look, then the real story there is Guild Wars expansions aren't big enough to support a variety of content, right? Like, Tangled Depths has every right to be confusing and difficult to navigate, but the truth is that there's only three maps in Heart of Thorns, right? Dragon Stand doesn't count as a full map. There's only three, and so you're telling me a third of it, I have to be confused and lost for navigation and all that? And that's where you get a problem, you know? Like, in my uh, thing where I say, like, my perfect Guild Wars 2, I, I, and I've been talking about length of uh, expansions and stuff a lot, See, the thing is, I don't want to use these, because I don't know if they're going to take me to the right place. Power plant north. I mean, fuck this. I I, I don't know. It's just going to cost me battery power. I, I just want to get over there now. Um, I kind of, you know, I've been saying that expansions are too small. My dream expansion, really, and I think that this isn't too bad. Thinking about what other games do, thinking about Guild Wars 1 campaigns and stuff. I reckon you should get like eight or eight to ten maps. And, you know, some of those maps don't even need meta events. They don't need to be what I think ArenaNet thinks every single map needs to be. But, uh, you know, like a good amount of space to move around and see things and explore Tyria. And then at that point, to me, Jesus Christ, at that point, I'm all right with uh, one of the maps being Tangled Depths and being confusing because, you know, it's not a third of the expansion. It's an an eighth of the expansion, you know. Hold on, this is Minsec. Uh, no matter where I turn, I'm just staring at the minimap trying to get closer and I'm getting rooted further and further away every time. This might be good now, here we go. Get this one. The irony here is I tried to get to the archives for so long before and the tea house is where I kept ending up, and now it's the reverse, of what, uh, the uh, the wrong way around. The red duck has become elusive. Looks like we got an event here. Junker and a sharpshooter. I mean, I'll fight him. 
Oh, hello. Pretty brave of you to accuse the Jade Brotherhood of stealing. Could be some nasty repercussions. Oh, I need to change my mindset now, though, because... We're on a power build. So there's certain buttons we don't want to just spam anymore. Like, Pistol 3 really is just for CCs again, though. So we've got some other players here. I'm going to stay on Dagger for now, so that when the protection refreshes, our Spinal Shivers it there, and then I'll go into Shroud and kill him. Okay, that's one guy. Thank you to the Spectre, by the way. It's cool to play with the Spectre. See the Spectre Shroud on me there? We've had very little moments of that. I honestly thought End of Dragons was going to be full of that, but... Oh, this guy doesn't have prot. He has res uh, resolution. That's cool. Oh, they already broke it. Nice. Break this. Wow, guys. They absolutely destroyed him. Okay. I don't know whether that actually gave us credit for some kind of achievement or anything. Probably not. Alright, but we're now actually... We'll be fine now, because I can just walk along the edge of the city and we know where we're going. You think Akavald is a good middle ground for those that want an engaging map and those who just want to follow the obvious path to the events or whatever? I actually think you're right, yeah. I think that Echovald really really kind of opens up and reveals a lot of secrets when you're doing map comp. But yeah, when you're just kind of moving around, it's pretty linear, isn't it? It's pretty easy. I think, I think yeah, that's a good observation. And then Echo Vald opens up even more when you get to the um, uh, collections and things. Okay, so we have a collection icon. Now, with any luck, she wants me to do an event, and it's this event. Our customers see the place like this. Hugh, please, can you help me track down those ruffians before the tea service starts? What's going on here? I knew I couldn't trust those louts. The Brotherhood took all my tea, and our service is about to start. Please, I can't leave the customers unattended. Can you recover the crates? Okay. I think we did this. What do you want? The lady doesn't pay, the shipment stays with us. Oh my god. Totally got reflected there. This goddamn chill I just put on myself. Ugh. Actually, screw this. Let's get out of this. Let's rip that. You had it coming. Oh jeez. Hopefully this isn't scaled too heavily. Seven minutes remaining. So if I'm lucky, this just procced three minutes ago. In which case, I should have ample opportunity to run these back. Hopefully, she only wants five of them. Let's see. We'll know from our first deposit. Looks like she probably wants like seven, which means this is scaled up to three players, I think. It's always a weird feeling because I feel like really what I should be wanting to do right now is kill the mobs, but tunnel vision in the crates makes more sense. Can't really hand them into her either. I guess I've got to put them all in the crates at the back. Man, I've got grapes in the fridge and I really want to go eat some grapes here. I might disappear, sneaky sneaky, in a second. <laughs> I'll start chewing away. I'll tell you, I've got like really, really dark purple ones in the punnet. They look extra juicy and extra sweet. You asked for it. What do you want? The lady doesn't pay. I just want the tea. Goodbye. You think you're going to give streaming a chance? You want to run a hero point train through this map, and you think it would be a ton of fun to stream. Thanks for the inspiration, WP. Hey, man, have fun with it. That sounds cool. I mean, it's you're kind of a bit late, really. The Heart of Thorns era is like the king era for hero point trains and stuff. Like, I don't really think you need hero point trains in this expansion, do you? I mean, they hit the balance on that really well. And Elite, I think, is, is excellent. It's not too hard for My most players. Partners may seem less than 
In fact, it's, it shouldn't be hard for really any players, right? I mean, if you have a really terrible build and, like, a really, really bad setup and you just can't do anything, then maybe. But, I mean, I don't know. If you're at that level, you're probably playing the game with a mate anyway, right? Who's just roped you into it. So, I don't know. I feel like I feel like elite balance is really good. Let me ask, and I'm not, I'm not doing this to shame people or whatever, but I'm doing this to figure out if I'm out of touch. Anyone in the live chat or the comments want to say if they... Was there an elite that you just couldn't beat in this expansion? Like a hero challenge that was just insanely, like, gruelingly difficult? Now, here's the thing, though. It's like you're conditioned over the years to, uh, to expect that you can kill everything first time in Guild Wars. I'm not, I, I'm not talking about, like, oh, I died once, I waypointed, and then I beat it. I mean, like, literally so hard you had to leave, fully leave. And I don't even necessarily think there's any problems with that, but... Some kind of that actually is okay to be honest, because it means that I can do this. Oh, that's interesting. Nothing else is on the map. Maybe I should fight them. Maybe they'll drop some. Oh god, I keep using Dagger 3. It's so stupid of me. You struggle with elites and Virtuoso. <laughs> okay, I can buy that, but that's because Virtuoso is awful. Virtuoso is like the least quality of life in existence. Virtuoso is an example of one of those horrible, horrible playstyles and builds where it really is just load as much damage as you possibly can to get through the fight quickly because you have absolutely no staying power or quality of life at all. That's Virtuoso. <laughs> You had a Phoenix one-shot you on Blatorn with his laser. Really? Phoenix la- I saw the laser. See, I, I, I might have a weird experience with this expansion because I, I, um, I just- I've had so much vitality the whole way through this that I, I maybe, maybe I have the wrong impression. That's awesome, dude. You never told me that before. And you've jumped into many solo players' fights and had them say thanks. That's cool. I, like I, I'll say it again, I think the balance is really good on this. I mean, I'm sort of getting some new information here, but I, I really like what I'm hearing. The Elite Phoenix is cracked. They're random, aren't they? They randomly generate, so I don't actually know... Um, if it's definitely a, a Phoenix there, do I? This would be cool. I, sh I need to play like a Norn or a Char. Who should I play next? And then I can figure out a build. Who would I be weakest on? To be honest, Warrior is one of those classes where I really don't have a satisfying quality of life build in mind at the moment. Like, like when I look at like Mesmer, when I look at Ellie, when I look at Necro here, which is funny, they're all light armor. I've got like seriously game breaking builds that I could run that would just destroy the game. But then there's certain other classes where it's like, I don't oh, know. Oh, wonderful. Oh, I am so eager to try that new Crichton blend straight from the Queen's table in Divinity's Reach. Yeah, yeah, okay. Now, look, I need. Thank you so much. Oh, I like the way she whispered that. Attention, citizens of New Kainu. We're receiving reports of power okay. outages across the city. Do not be alarmed. Several transportation what are we doing with her? systems have been suspended. Are we buying tea? Not looking back. Carriage growth. Purchase tea. Of course, after the way you helped me earlier, it's the least I can do. I'll be sure to send over the good blends. The real good blends. Please don't tell anyone about the gangs. <laughs> Okay, good. So we had good timing on that. Now, unfortunately, we are stuck waiting for uh, for this thing here at the bell. Now, interestingly enough, it's just been reset. The blackout is starting, and the blackout might be the daily. No, maybe not. How do I see the daily? Just here? Daily end of dragons. I get a vista, fish something up, Sai Tung events. All right, well, whatever. But it's not daytime, so the kid's not going to want to do that. I won't do another Kining Meta. No, I was happy to do the Gangs of Echovald right at the start today because, you know, it only took a few seconds.
Zerk warrior, you have decapitate whilst you need. Well. It's an outlook. I think a uh, ranger I'd be pretty set for as well. Actually, both on Soul Beast. I have a really good brawler Soul Beast playstyle for the open world, which is just so strong. And then afterwards uh, with um, Untamed as well, actually. Based on my experience in Beta 2, I'm, I'm not. I'm pretty confident I'll be fine there as well. And there's something really fun to sort of sink into. Dude, this uh, this Richless event actually spams constantly. It's the same event again. I wonder if that's because her sequence failed the last time. I don't know. But hey, as fun as this is, and I really do mean that, I, <laughs> I actually do kind of just want to beat all these guys up. Dagger feeling real snappy right now. Uh, let's do one of the other quests since this isn't going anywhere. This isn't doing anything. So, Lost Law. Locate the lost records of Shinji's history all over Tyria. Oh, the Ministry of Archives. No, I was there a second ago. It's okay. I put a personal waypoint down. I put a personal waypoint. I can just go. Right? Right? Oh. Okay, hold on. I'm going to try the teleporter. We can get there. It's fine. I'm going to try the teleporter. Look, so we come to this waypoint. Two warriors from opposing factions stood together to conquer a common enemy. And then there's a teleporter desperately racking my... Here, there's a teleporter here. And a battery. Okay. Now the mi oh! Wait, why don't I get a destination? Oh, are these not real teleporters? They're like heart teleporters. Shit. Well, whatever. I'm just I'm just going to go along here and we'll find one in a minute. That takes me up. Anytime I go up, I'm happy. Going up is brilliant. We're not far away, actually. This might be the thing. Oh, the temptation to Skyscale or Griffin is just so... <gasps> I could have bonded a faith. I know. I know I could have bonded a faith. I'm just not that kind of guy, guys. I'm not going to cheat, you know. Actually, wow, how high were we there? Because, my God, we're still not. Wow. I had a... You get a real sense of how tall Kainan is there. Because we fell a lot there, twice. And we're still all the way up here. Someone left me a big, long comment about that Jade thing. Guys, I, I, I feel kind of bad. There's been so much commentary. You know, today I did my, um, my video on Season 6. But last night, while writing the video, I was thinking about season one of the soup of um, Living World versus the Super Adventure Box. Oh shit! Wow, the 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 mech just said the city will crumble. Holy shit! This is creepy. Look at this. Yeah, uh, I was thinking about Season 1 versus Super Adventure Box. And the more I thought about it, the more I thought... This is actually a really complicated discussion. So I threw up a, t a Twitter poll. And uh, I actually threw up a YouTube poll as well. Hopefully you guys saw that. It was just a regular, like, YouTube community thing. Which is, like, a thing I'm trying to do a bit more of. Now, here's the thing. Um, I do think it's a really difficult question to answer. I think when you first think about it... You're going to be like, oh, that's obvious. But I think the more you think, the worse it gets. It's a lot like, here's a great question, okay? All right, now I'm asking all of you guys to contribute to this. I'm serious right now. I want your answer. Are there more so? doors or wheels in the world? Enjoy your daily activities. Okay, so this is a, a, big, a big topic that the greatest minds of the United Kingdom... Sir B. Written was asking about on uh, on Reddit last week, and it created a massive debate. So, are there more wheels or doors in the world? Now, you might immediately think, "Oh, that's really obvious," but then you're thinking about like, "Okay, well, what about the wheels on like my office chair? And, like, what about the wheels on like a lawnmower? And what about you know, is is the door to the washing machine a door? Is is a boot to a car a door? You know, um." 
what if I have something sliding along like a little track? Are they all wheels? You know, like, like it just unravels and unravels and unravels. And it's actually like a, a really difficult to answer and figure out, you know, how many wheels per person. Do you want to do it? How many doors per person? How many wheels per person? Guess. How does that average out when a, you have multiple people in a single household? It's crazy. Anyway, the Super Adventure Box versus Season 1 thing. It's a similar debate. I'm guessing here, by the way, they want me to do this event. So let's just go up and... I'm going to interrupt this whole conversation now because I, I, I'm really keen on what they have to say here. Where are you? On the on the upper balcony even up there? Oh, nice. I don't remember any content up there, so... Are you going to fob me off until I sort out the propaganda? Hello, Juwan Ral. Unbelievable. I thought she was lying to get me to show. But here you are, the commander in the flesh. This changes things. Juwan Ral. Bal and Ree sent me to collect records from the archives. So it seems. I'll tell you what I told her. This request is tied up in committee. Somebody important wants these to stay buried. You're saying there's no way to access them then? Oh no, I can get them for you. I just need a little help with a project of my own. First... If I'm to risk the ire of said individual. Okay, so what's the project? Let's say I have a vested interest in disrupting um, the modern purist movement's activities. I have intel on their operations. You stop them and I sneak these records out of the archives. Sound fair? This doesn't sound like Ministry of Archives work. Very astute. Of course, if I were an undercover agent with the Ministry of Intelligence, I'd have to deny it, wouldn't I? Okay. So you want to sneak some stuff out. The Ministry of Archives wouldn't be happy with that. I like this. We get a little bit of Ministry v Ministry. That hollow looks good, by the way. Jade Tech hollow. Actually, they might not even be a hollow. Oh, it's a goddamn ranger. They're just in the outfit, right? The, uh... Oh, what's it called? It's an outfit. All right, you got a deal. Foil the purest plot in the Monastery Gardens. All right, so we go north a little bit. The Ministry Gardens. On the impact of the affliction on local wildlife in Zendaiju. Did you know that there's a spider the size of a house living in a cave there? My sister told me about it. Oh, well, yeah. It says root out um, people in the Ministry of Archives district. So is this is this quest just getting me to do um, like random events in the map? Sharp words aren't gonna get you very far a Let's have a look. Fight. I'm gonna finish this event because it looks like they might want me to just do an assortment of other content. So this quest is kind of just like layered over other quests. I really need to use my heal more and my signet heal more and my dagger heal more. <laughs> Kind of just letting them sit there without ever healing up. Of course, it's better if I'm outnumbered. That was nice. The dodge roll on the uh, skill four. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, so Super Avenger Box V Season One. It's it's tricky. And there's I've had so many messages about it on Twitter and on the YouTube post um, that I want to respond to. You know. So today I did my video about season six. I could have easily just made it purely about season one versus Super Adventure Box. My rough take on it um, at the moment. Gone. Just. Holy fuck! We're not going to get this done. You know. This event's going to time out in a second. There you go. That xenophobic. That title. Fury of purpose, and now this guy's pissed at me. Sharp words aren't gonna get you very far without a strong enough fight. Maybe I can stick here long enough for a boom to appear. Nah, fuck it. So yeah, my general take is, uh, oh, I was out of range. Um, I think everyone to point out that season one is not as good as they remember is totally right, because it's not very good. And, like, the Cragstead patch proves it. On Twitter, I couldn't really, like, I couldn't add many characters to the discussion. So, I just kept it real short and sweet. On YouTube, the poll, I kind of gave a little bit more context. And I said, you know, yada, yada, yada. And what I'm proposing when I say Season 1 is not Season 1 remastered. It's not just totally new content themed like old Season 1, which is probably the right way to do it. I'm suggesting just kind of put it in there in order, you know. And it would be shockingly bad. Like, really bad. Like, the main argument, um... 
the main argument about season one is that it's healthy for the game, right? Because people don't know who the fuck Timey is, or Bram is, or Marjorie is, or Kazmir is. They don't know any of them. So you've just literally spent 60 hours learning all about Destiny's Edge 1.0, and then it's just this awful, awful experience in season two. And they're talking about Scarlet. And it's like, Jesus Christ, it's bad. So the idea that like they can actually pave over that, people can get into it, that's a thing. But it, season one is still pretty rubbish anyway. And here's the other real problem. Um, what we got, 90 seconds? It's okay to put season one in, but if gem gates are still in the game anyway, you know, a new player is there and it's like, okay, I still have to pay all these gems just for the pleasure of looking at season one and then looking at a bit of season two and looking at a bit of season three. People aren't consuming the game in that way anyway. So season one has to come bundled with a removal of gem gates to even be remotely worth it. And I don't even know if that's plausible. So that's, that's kind of a downside to the season one thing. Um, and I want to make another note as well here. This is exactly what I'm talking about when I say that the status quo sucks at the end of End of Dragons. Oh, we might get it. I got 10 in. Come on, let's keep trying it. We might make it if these guys really work. 30 seconds. Indeed. These are some of the One more book, guys. I think we got this. When I was whining in my End of Dragons review about how the status quo sucks, I didn't even talk about that side of it, but it's just as important. That's lovely. See the Sea of Memory short stories. Traditional values, pure intentions. Jesus Christ. All right. Um, we're still stuck in the season one hole. If End of Dragons ended by moving Marjorie away and Kazmir away and Bram away and Timey away, get them the fuck away. Get them because we can't see their whole story. So shunt them off to the side. Then they don't have to worry about season one anymore. All these complaints. Oh, but season one's not there. I can't have the story. If you do an actual fresh start, a clean slate, season one doesn't matter anymore. You've sidestepped the necessity for it. But they didn't do that in End of Dragons. We still have all these same characters lingering around. You know, I talked about the Orin thing, but I didn't even I didn't even mention in, in my End of Dragons review the season one part of it. So anyway, that's a kind of another thing that the elites. Oh, here you go. It is. It is what it is. It is what it is. Okay, maybe that's the plot in the Ministry of Gardens, actually. The pair of the thieves. So it looks like this quest here, this is just do a bunch of random things around the expansion. Which, honestly, is a bit lame. Not that one. This one, looking back. Why isn't it closing? Well, there you go. Uh, or is it Lost Law? It's Lost Law. I think this is just do various events. So I don't know how focused we can do this. Oh no, look. Search for lost records in a great library across the sea. No way. Is that going to be Cormier's library? Where is the Ministry of Security when you need them? So maybe we'll do this. Beneath the Emperor's feet. In the markets of New Kainang. But some of these are definitely events as well, so who knows. Right, let's go over here. Uh, what was the zone? It's really hard to hold two totally different conversations at <laughs> once right now. Covered supplies, here you. Oh, well, someone's actually fighting already. Oh, it's, no, it's just an NPC. Let's get that mic going up. Look at that. 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. Shotgun, but he dodged it. It's fine. Boom, there it is. Right after the brake bar that goes down as well. But he has protection. Target executed. Panicked egress. So, uh, so anyway, that's that's a little bit about the season one side of it. On the super adventure box side of it, I mean, a lot of people don't like the super adventure box. It is just a festival. It doesn't really benefit the game. I mean, here's the there's there's an interesting argument you can say, and I think quite fairly, season one helps all of Guild Wars because now you can play the whole story. Blah blah blah. We have to be we have to remain quiet about the gem gates and all that shit, right? But there's some logic there. But then there's kind of that logic for Super Adventure Box 2 in as much as, like, it does come back every year. So surely that's of some benefit, you know. Season 1 is bad enough 
that like it's it's not like we'll replay season one. How many people are like we might do it once, but generally speaking, it's it's sort of just a thing that you do once. But Super Adventure works out. You probably do play every year. I play World One and Two every year. Maybe that's crazy of me. Maybe that. But so that that's kind of difficult for me to get a grip on too. Like and actually figure that out. But then Super Adventure Box is so separate to the rest of the game. Both features are these weird features where it's like, um, <coughs> there, there's past suggestions that we'll get them and the fact that we haven't, like, looks like studio incompetence or whatever. You know, we'd like to feel like we have a complete product. It would be nice to have promises fulfilled, that kind of thing, you know. It builds trust and faith that you can be excited about future content instead of feeling deflated about all of it. So that that's all, you know, they're both equally important on those grounds. You know, the actual value they provide to the game almost doesn't matter. You know, it's just following through on, on something they wanted to do. They've now done. That, there's a lot of meaning to that. But so, yeah, I don't know. I, honest to God, guys, I don't know the answer to the question. That's why I threw that tweet out. That's why I threw that um, YouTube post out. And it's interesting. What I noticed is the earliest voters in the, those polls, they both heavily... F so my more dedicated fans, I guess. I don't know. I put the tweet to, I put it out at like 6 in the morning. I was on my laptop right in the season 6 video. And um, it was 6 in the morning. I couldn't sleep. I threw the tweet out. And um, by the time I woke up, there'd been like 5,000 votes. <laughs> um, so a lot of those were early in the night. But before I went to bed, it was all heavily season 1. Everyone was saying season 1, season 1, season 1. By the time I woke up, Super Adventure Box had caught up big time. Like big time. And it's more like 60-40 now. So I don't know. It's, that's been kind of interesting to me to see as well. But I don't know the answer. And, um... I don't know. Uh, I guess it was just a fun sort of, uh... Discussion, I think. This probably isn't going to progress anything. It's day now. No, it's still not day. Why is it always night time? I don't want it to be night anymore. Come on, we're going to go see this kid with this toy or something. I'm really sad that the House of Seltzer storyline's already done. I wanted to see more about um, Danica and stuff. Sorry, are these guys are going to infinitely spawn. Unless I pick up the signal fragments. Jesus Christ, who spawned all of these? Wait, what do you want me to do? Why are they not going to be back now? Oh shit, there's a mini game each time and I didn't see it because I was in Shroud. I see. Okay. You don't know how season one is even a good option when current players know the story well enough. Well look, there's there's a there's a lot of other stuff as well, like Um I'm free. I'm free. Oh thank you, friend. Thank you. Another minute stuck in that loop and oh, I'm gonna go try and the find teleporter. these vault pages. Okay, let's see if I can while we talk about this. Some of this is conversation I've had before in the past. Um, I hate how shallow people are. I really hate how shallow people are in the Living World Season 1 conversation. I think so few people have got like any capacity to think about the story. To think about the, the conversation on a deep level, on any way. I really hate that about people. And what do I mean? Why am I insulting everyone? Why am I being so offensive and calling you all shallow? It's because so many people come up with this terrible argument that it's just about the story. And it's, it's clearly not just about the story. Like, people, people are like, well, I already played that. I already know what that story is. I did that in 2013. It's like, yeah, mate, that was a decade ago. That was 10 years ago. Where half of the surrounding systems were different. Like, you didn't play it on a Harbinger. You didn't play it on a Reaper. You didn't play it on a Scourge. You didn't play it with any of the skill balance that's even remotely like what it is at this point. Let alone gear and all that stuff. Right? None of the supporting features. None of the, like, you know, that, that, and that doesn't include, like, graphical improvements and changes like FOV and all those things. Like, a huge, even if, even if it was a one-for-one -one copy of what you did a decade ago, it would still be a different experience to play it now. Not just in literal terms, but in terms of like how you contextually view things, right? And how you compare it to other experiences you now have, which are of a, sta a higher quality. And that's if it was a one-for-one re-implementation. 
which does not have to be the only way you do season one. So now on those posts, I didn't, I didn't actually stake too much onto this. On YouTube, I did a bit more. But here's the thing, like, if they're re-adding season one, it's not going to be the same as it used to be. Even if you had photo perfect memory of exactly how season one was before, and it's impossible for it to excite you in any way, which it, I don't buy for a second. But even if it was, it doesn't matter anyway because it's going to be different. Because they're not going to have giant Zergs fighting twisted watchwork shit all over the Blood Tide coast this time. And they're not going to be having giant Zergs fighting twist. Um. Um. I mean, Christ, any of the Zerg stuff across the whole season, which is what a huge part of it was, you know? You're not going to have that South Sun a first run through with the lion guard and everyone disconnecting from maps desperate to get a free precursor right like it's not gonna be the same even when you can take things one for one like the tower of nightmares it's not gonna be the same so the idea that they can't embellish on things that they can't round certain things out it, the idea that you just because you know the most basic bullet point beats of the story of the story alone just some points some, just some notes just some What's the what's the phrase? I can't remember the phrase. Uh, just some like very 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 loose, vague ideas about it, about the story, and that's it. That therefore invalidates the whole concept to you. I think it's absurd, like truly absurd. Now I get it. It's kind of dissatisfying to play a story that you know where it's going and you know how it's going to end. I understand that, and for that reason, I'd never advocate, like, the next two years to be about season one, to fully re-implement the goddamn thing. But the idea that they can't hit some kind of a middle ground, where it basically feels new to you, because it was a decade ago, and that, you know, they've, they've, they've conformed it to new game standards, I think there's a lot of potential there. There's a ton of possibility for Meaningful Living World Season 1, but so many people just, like, stick their middle finger up at, at it, and they just dismiss it instantly out of hand. And they just say, no, I already played it. It's like, well, what are you talking about? And just the, the, the complete inability to see that argument. Like, it blow, it really aggravates the hell out of me. And, it, you know, we've talked about Season 1 a lot, a lot of the times. But, uh, yeah, that's always something that's, like, nails on a chalkboard for me. So that's kind of like an argument for Season 1. So I don't know. I don't know. I'd take either of them. And some other people said to me, hey, WP, this is evil. Because I don't want to choose between them. I want them both. And why not both is obviously a nice idea, but, you know, I'm here to have... You know, we, we got to... we got to accept the fact that we've got neither right now. So let's, let's say, if you had to pick one, what would you pick? You know, where would you go with it? And let's actually challenge that for a second. But maybe we'll get both eventually. Who knows? It's not a fun conversation at that point, though. It can't... We'll get neither and like it. I mean, that's another thing, too. I mean, obviously, I threw that. I kind of had an observation about that when I made that tweet. You know, like, uh, ArenaNet themselves can, like, put their little tweets out sometimes and do their little polls and have fun. Like, I saw that Shaman did a poll earlier in the week where he said, like, let's have a real discussion, Choya or Bram kind of thing, and to just do fun little polls. But ArenaNet can never do polls like uh, like that one I just did, because if they went out and said Season 1 or <laughs> Super Revenge Box, they'd break the community, you know, because there'd be a sense that they're actually going to do one of them. <laughs> they can't just idly have, a, have fun with, an, with a crazy thought experiment like that. People would take it as a telegraph. So that's kind of a fun thought. By the way, have you guys noticed the sharks from the legendary on the auto? He's evading. Look at the sharks. How cool is that? Because obviously we, we're, our attack rate is so high. Maybe that's not too novel. Maybe that happens constantly. It's actually a terrible example there because he was evading constantly. But hey, whatever. Right. So this vault thing. There's like some pages that I'm missing. And I kind of wanted to grab them while we wait for day. Maybe we should eyeball the uh, achievement. Act 2. No, no, no. Not Act 2. It's going to be in the map, isn't it? So, End of Dragons. New kind of Read the secrets of the vault. So, we are looking for 5, 8, and 9. And it's 8 and 9 that I'm really interested in. So 
It's five, eight, and nine, and they are numbered, right? That's one. We already read that. Now we went in the vault. Now I'm concerned that maybe there's a secret way out of that vault that I didn't see with another piece of paper. That's two. That's three. No, we're finding them in a good order right now. There's six. We already got that. The drain in there. Did I ever go in here? Did I ever press F on this? Oh, we just removed something off of it. Did you guys see that? Oh, no, that was another objective, wasn't it? Unclogging drains? I seem to remember we have an achievement to do that. Unclog drains around the map. That's four. So maybe five is around here somewhere. Did I miss this one? It's kind of buried in there. Oh, seven. Here are. I think this one is new. Oh, no, it's eight and nine. No, I got seven. Five, eight, and nine. Season one is just a missing puzzle piece in the game, and anything that makes Guild Wars 2 more complete product, you're all for it. Well, okay, that's fine, but let me ask you, what do you think about this idea of just hand-waving the whole thing? Because we're in a new era now, you know? Not about dragons, not about dragons, watch. So fuck it. What do you, what do you think about that idea? Because that's sort of what I thought End of Dragons was doing, you know? And you can be grumpy about it, but it is at least a way through. Dude, all the evade spam these guys down here. So I wish I was comedy. This chest appears almost impossible to open. Oh. I wonder if these guys themselves give me the last two. You know, like maybe it's like one of them gives me eight and the other one gives me nine when I speak to them when they're sort of back to normal. That's Oh, maybe I should actually just try that right now. Maybe it's already possible. I feel like I'm forgetting something. Someone. Oh no, she's off. Coming an orb. Waterlogged vault manual. Even if that explains five and nine, I don't know where where um. No, sorry, eight and nine. I don't know where five is. Maybe I need to look sort of further afield, you know. Oh, what's this here? Kind of want a spectral grasp here just for shrouds so that I can start moving. I guess I'll just look in the vault. I mean, I don't know. More needle in a haystack gameplay. This isn't the most riveting stuff, is it? And it's been so much of what we've been doing recently. Wow, that was a big pull. I must have been right on the edge. <laughs> Those constant shark strikes. Okay, here we go. So an old Kainang chess, and they're dancing. This ancient chess has been recently fitted with a cheaply made external lock that requires a key. Maybe the smuggler camp is nearby? Did we have the key last time? I think we did, didn't we? So there's absolutely nothing in here. So the fact that they're telling me to go up to the smuggler camp makes me think that maybe the smugglers took the other notes. The other pages from the book. I mean, there's a lot here. There's a vault chest key here. I mean, that's <laughs> that's definitely that. Wait, you think I just looked at eight? 
Seriously? What, inside the vault? Oh. Oh wow, that's repeatable. Regain access. You can get two AP from repeating that apparently. That's strange. You think I looked at eight on the way out? Sorry, I'm missing a ton of comments here. I'm really sorry to the live chat here. Right? I'm missing a lot of messages. To the west, further down the river. What, up on the shore? Oh, this is awful. I'm trying to look at chat, but I also can't look away for a second because I might miss the thing. Not west, south. Okay. Oh, is that it? It does say down the mate there. Hey, nicely done. We totally looked at it. Oh, are you going to really be evading this? Oh, I really should have uh, waited the Dark Barrage then. Okay. Book of You Were and Dalnim. This is 8 out of 9, right? Yes, it is. I told Mina that You Were is dead, that I threw her in the bay near the Napui so that the body will wash up near the Jade Brothered base. It will buy us enough time to plan any retaliation from the Brotherhood. It also gives you or and I enough time to leave the city before everything explodes. Before anyone realizes that you and I are missing. You are or I are missing. We're leaving tomorrow night. Headed to Xingji first. Maybe find a boat. Headed to Tyria. You has got her mindset on a loner. But I'd love to see it all. I want to show her the whole world. I wish that instead of mentioning Tyria and Alona there, they had mentioned another distant shore that we've never heard of. Like, just a random little noun there, that, uh, representing something we didn't know before. So they had a plan to visit the whole world. Very sad, because we know they're not going to make it. Oh, that's Auric Alcum. Okay, so that's good. So we're just looking for number nine now. Maybe down? That's seven. Alright, yeah, let me, let me read this in chat here. Uh, Ender Dragons had enough callbacks that could be satisfied with them leaving it there and basically starting fresh as long as there's something cool to show us. I mean, they could. They could. And uh, to be fair, I think um, I think that's a very good point that maybe there really is that hard reset coming up. I also kind of agree that Season 6 doesn't have to do the hard reset. At the end of the day, you might want to wait till the next expansion. I mean, I kind of think that that's a lot of waiting around, but may maybe that's also totally fair. Let's try it higher up, but low. What if it's like on one of the buildings, like totally high up? I mean, the idea of the story is they drown, so surely they're all in the water. But yeah, that hard reset might happen, and we might be able to sidestep season one still anyway. Return. Uh, if they're going to keep telling character-based stories from Mike, says uh, with our current group, they might have to reintroduce them to newer players or recontextualize them somehow. Yeah, that's another idea that they might just be able to say, "Hey, here's the character," Death. and it's just like a mini recap. You know, you don't need to understand too much more because I'm kind of doing something a bit dirty. You've you've made even a good point there, in as much as like I'm kind of like. Suggesting that it's impossible to enjoy Bram unless you know Bram's whole story. And that's not true. You might see Bram, you might see Kazmir, you might see whoever, and you might say, you might like him, you might find him entertaining. Did I need to see Kanark in season one to have fun of him, with him as a casino boss? Did I need to? Well, no, not really. Oh my god, this is... I thought I found something really sneaky there, but I haven't. Ah, oh, I don't like this. I'm not having fun with these needle and haystacks. And how is it still night time? How is it still night? Did anyone wish uh, ReNet released some Canthan Raid or something with Reincarnate Shiro as the boss? 
I personally don't think they have to go on and on and on about Guild Wars 1 stories all the time, so no. But I, I, that's alright. And they might do it, you know. They're talking about Ricey Palace. It probably wouldn't be a raid, though. It would be a strike mission, which I, I think is cool and fine anyway. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure, guys. I kind of want to quit this. It's just one of the more common complaints that people don't know who the characters are, but fixing it's tough. Yeah, look, the main... To me, okay, the main problem is new players. It's not existing players. I don't care about the existing players very much, to be honest. You're already here. You don't need to be preached to the choir. You're already having fun. The Guild Wars' biggest problem is it doesn't get new fans. You know, in today's video, I, I mentioned that I was able to pick up a game like Final Fantasy and I could play it through from the start to the end and there weren't any glaringly terrible moments that threw me off. Guild Wars 2 has that. You know, the personal story is a very different game and suddenly in Season 2, you have a very, very bad, rough transition. That transition is the focus for me when it comes to Season 1. It's not really about enjoyment of the characters at the moment or any of that stuff. And what the veterans say, oh, I wanted to see my train, I don't understand. I don't really care about any of that stuff. I care about the fact that a lot of new players aren't making it here. And um, and the season, one, the season 2 awkwardness start is a part of it. But the other part of it is the gem gates. So, again, if we're just doing this change nakedly, it doesn't really matter to me. It's... Season 1 implementation and removal of gem gates, those two, they kind of unlock the way, you know. But until that's there, both are there. I don't know. I think it's just a lot of talk. For no reason. Talk that I invited, don't get me wrong. Yeah, I'm done with this. I'm really done with this. Let's go back to Saitung and piss about there for a bit. Or not, because this place... Uh, what's especially aggravating me here is I'm really not having fun. Just I can't stand still for a second without something being on me. Okay, so let's, let's go see if this toy event comes up at some point. And if it doesn't, we will do, uh, I don't know, we can look at some other events that we haven't done yet, some other things around Saitung. Or we can look at Albax. I mean, Albax is an interesting quest as well. I mean, is it day now? It sort of looks like day. Looks like the sun's rising. Oh, here you go. No, 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 it's up, it's up. <gasps> it's up. Find the toys taken by the pale spirits. Children's toys. Your contribution, zero. Time before the spirits disappear with toys, 12 minutes. This is it. Oh, not spirit sprites. Oh no, it is spirits and sprites. It's both. Give me a toy. Wait. What was that all about? Oh. Oh, here we go. It died and it dropped the toy. It's a ball in a cup. I think I remember doing this. This is one of the first things we did, right? In like episode one. Hold the phone though, where's the deposit? Echo Vault Adventure Tours. Adding a little excitement to your family vacation. Echo Vault Adventure Tours? I'd love to go on an Echo Vault Adventure Tour. You know what's worrying me right now? In the flavor text for this part of the quest, it totally says kids don't go out at night or something. But this event can only trigger during the day. It's not going to make me do the event and then wait for the following night, is it? God, I hope it's not that. I can sort of see why it's just like a random comment about... Well, it's not a random comment. It's just trying to telegraph to me that it's only available during the day. So it's fine. Ball in a cup, ball in a cup, it's a ball in a cup. Mm. Yeah, it's just a way of telling you don't come here at night, yeah. I hope that's what it is. I love that you can actually go into the room though and you can sort of talk to her. Sort of go through the closed door. This is gonna unlock, look at all these objectives guys, look at this. 
Help Snargle overcome a slump in his career. Is this going to unlock a ton of Snargle dialogue now? Or is it just going to be event, 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 event? Because what I'm beginning to wonder is maybe off screen, outside of the Let's Play. Oh, wait, I thought I picked one up. Oh, dude. I'm wondering if I just do all of this. When I know that it's just, hey, do the events that we've already done. I can just wait until there's dialogue, you know, and then when the le when these episodes start, we just put the dialogue in. That will keep the pace up for you guys. We get all the good stuff. Also, if I produce it that way, I can kind of, you know, some of these needle in the haystack things I can sort of not force you to watch. Right, there we go. Let's see what she says. It's a lot of snargle dialogue every three steps. Oh, nice. So we're about to get some, are we? But the thing is, that's probably just this one thing, right? So it's like snargle. One, two, three, snargle. One, two, three. Oh, God, I missed that up. Hold on. Snargle. One, two, three, snargle. One, two, Thanks three, so snargle. Phew. One, two, three, snargle. My parents snargle. were gonna be so mad. My parents say we can't get rid of them because they bring good luck to the village. But why do they gotta take my toys? Right, so it's, it looks like there's maybe like three or four phases where we can check check him out and uh, see what he has to say. Okay. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I have learned my way around now. You see this here? Look at this. We're going to go in the teleporter. Oh man, we nearly got Arbor Stone here, by the way. Nearly finished it. I don't even really remember doing anything yet, but <laughs> somehow we got a ton of XP. Um, considering this last bar is the final rung of the deepest line in the X-Pack. Oh no, sorry, I tell a lie. It's exactly as deep as Jade Bots. And maybe the Turtle as well. Yeah, out of five. Oh, there's Dolly Axe here and, uh, and Norn and stuff. I like that. Hold on, isn't he over here? I know what you're all thinking. There's probably an icon, but I can't see one, so. Oh, where are you, Oh, just someone's bedroom. I'm getting a fairly good experience here. Like, every time I come here, the place has built up a lot more. More people in the little bedrooms and things. More fabrics and stuff around. Cooking stations. He wasn't just downstairs in the main hall, was he? He's not in the memorial area. Okay, I guess I don't know my way around. More more hunting for a needle in a haystack here. That's going to be the phrase of the day, I think. And this is a crafting area again. Sorry, what? Oh, there is an icon, but I had to be close. There are icons, but once again, we had to be close already. Here we are. Hello, Snargle. This should be good. I've been enjoying his dialogue. Commander, I must admit, some of these items you've collected are quite fascinating. Canthan art intrigues me. So much is left implied. You needn't go out of your way to find more, but should you happen upon them, I would not object. Okay, well, remind me of the things that Ruki recommended you study. So we're now at Ask Speaker and Jew in Dragon's End about acquiring a relic. Purchase a painting of Empress Inn from a desperate painting in Sai Tung. Obtain a sprout of the Forever Tree from the Warden in the Echovald Wilds. The locals here have never seen my kind before. I'm honored oh, to represent God. the charm. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I feel like they wrote that line knowing people would hate it in the best of ways. Let's listen to that again. 
Oh, he went to... <laughs> Snargo is the representative of the char. Have you gotten to tour the forest since arriving? Did he say this to me? I don't... Uh, this is all new, isn't it? I have, and I must admit it is a great disappointment. I'd been led to expect it would be petrified. I suppose it's better that it's a thriving ecosystem once again. But certainly... The no, we've heard this. So many ancient trees hardened to shafts of stone, thrusting into the sky above. <laughs> well, that would have been uniquely arresting. Okay, look, look. Don't either one or two things happen in here. Either ArenaNet are master trolls, and they start a conversation that you think is about something new, and it inevitably always returns to trees thrusting into the sky, right? And they're master trolls, and they've specifically set that up. Either that, or I'm an idiot. <laughs> and I keep forgetting the start of that conversation. And then it goes back to that again. Um, so, hold on. Have you sampled any food? And how? Commander. If you have not had the chance yet, you simply must track down a restaurant with pufferfish on the menu. It is incredibly toxic if not prepared just so, but it's also a powerful aphrodisiac. I don't know if it's something in the content of the meat, or quite simply the thrill of still being alive after. But I'm happy to report... The stories are true. Oh, I've been ending every night with a plate of it. And my ideas have never come oh. easily. Bro, don't tell me what you're having to get the horn before you go to bed. And all your eyes are coming e uh, ideas are coming easily. Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh, have you met any of our new friends? That was definitely new. I have. And dear commander, you been holding out on me. I had the pleasure of acquainting myself with your friend, Detective Rama. And that man has the face of a young and exceptionally virile god. I inquired as to whether he might consider posing for the cover of my next novel. And do you know what he said to me? I'd rather eat day-old sushi while sand crabs attach themselves to my... <laughs> Well, you can imagine how it ended. I know I have. Ugh, god damn, dude. I know I have. This is unbelievable. Okay, so we'll get three more things. Probably an event each time, right? For these three? It's just occurred to me that I'm a total idiot. And the, the, I've named this part the hunt for Zunra or whatever. But we're already done with the Zunra quest. I literally can't get any further through the Zunra quest until we do Dragon Stand, so Dragon's End. So, well, there you go. Foil the purest plot in the Ministry Gardens. I've got, I've got to see this, guys. Search for lost records in a great library across the sea. <laughs> That's not going to be Cormier's library, is it? I mean, there's, there's not going to be a POF thing, is there? It's not going to be that. They won't have done that. So it would have to be in the Dermond Priory. There's a, there must be an objective in the Dermond Priory. Search for lost records at the summit of the Assassin's Path. The Assassin's Path. By the way, am I... Uh, I have done both jumping puzzles, right? There are many dungeons in these maps, not jumping puzzles. There's not a jumping puzzle on this map that I'm unaware of, right? So I don't know about that, actually. Albax, I've got so much to do here. I think I'm going to have to start using the wiki for these. But look at this. Brave the dead land to claim the foot of the swiftness. Albax pointed north towards the cursed shore of war. Find the former walker of the blasted land and gain a symbol of new growth. Albax shrugged while talking of the branded landscape of the Iron Marches. Well, that... 
gain a symbol of new growth in the iron marches. If that was Fields of Ruin, I'd say, okay, that's going to be the grave. In homes of pale parchment hills, find the form of an old survivor in the hands of a young one. Albach smiled, thinking of the rivers of the Timberline Falls. Find the form of an old survivor in the hands of a young one. All I can think of there is like the um, the mighty ooh, you know, is the face the, the old survivor and the inquest guy in there, the young one? I don't know. In lush lands racked with waste, ask for that which glitters in their patron's gaze. Albach's eyes opened with wide, picturing the dangers of Mount Maelstrom. Lush lands racked with waste. Well, that definitely sounds like around the Crucible of Eternity. Near where the golem spawns. Ask for that which glitters in their patron's gaze. I could maybe get close to the area there. A sacred weapon is held in the boughs of great trees, never to be turned against them. Albach spoke of the verdant sites of the Maguma jungle. A sacred weapon is held in the boughs of great trees. The faces near the great jungle worm in the walls? Or is it talking about like Kaladbog, the Traherne Memorial? I'm not getting any of these. The needy holds tight to a hope of plenty in a pitiless golden land. Albax cringed while thinking of the heat in the Crystal Desert. Okay, hold on, hold on. Crystal Desert, though. You're not put putting me in Path of Fire, are you? The needy hold tight to a hope of plenty in a pitiless golden land. Inside the Mystic Forge? Oh, they are taking me to the Crystal Desert. I'm being told in the live chat. You think that's the Cormir Temple? Jesus, that's a vague clue. That's a huge region. That's like two massive maps, and they're going to give me the needy hold tight to a hope of plenty in a pitiless golden land. There's two extras, because one was Heart of Thorns and one was PF. So, oh, so this one of the Maguma jungle is, is the heart of Maguma. A sacred weapon is held in the boughs of great trees, never to be turned on them. The weapon in the trees. In Heart of Thorns context. Christ, I mean, I don't, I don't know. There's a million things that vaguely that might be. The porcelain feline beckoned you towards service in the name of the savory. Albax mentioned the smell of food in New Kaineng. What's this one here? The jade sea all around him. In the sea of green among the scaly ones, a relic lies with the mistakes of one's past. I, honestly, every single one of these baffles me and would, would just require me to be running around on the map for like a fucking, like for a long time. And in fact, I would never get the bottom two. With this Crystal Desert thing and th thinking of the heat, I probably would have tried Silver Waste and Dry Top before actually going there. The pale tree in Venom I was thinking of the blighting tree, but I, I don't know. This, this to me is just use wiki. This is like a community game, you know. The community figures that out. Because I certainly am not going to be able to do that. This is interesting as well. Acquiring a relic from Speaker Yunju. <sighs> I never got these last books. I feel really bad at the moment, like I'm in the middle of way too many things all at once. 
So maybe searching lost records in a great library across the sea is the Cormier Library then. We were already at the Dermond Priory. Had I started this quest at that point? When we were looking for the tapestry? I think I had. It's crazy to me that Marjorie has three goddamn positions after the battle for the Jade Sea. Right, I'm going to go to Wiki and see how filled in this is now. Because I don't, I don't honestly see this Let's Play having any pace about it without using their help. Okay, so we're going to do Lost Law first. The Wiki contributors have done amazing already. Okay, so here we go. So foil the purest plot in the monastery gardens. We're going to get proclamations on the risen threat. And we need to complete a group event here. That's to unmask the purest sympathizers. By speaking to Special Agent Teng, slightly north of a waypoint. Uh, a hero challenge, sorry. So there's going to be a purist plot. It's a group event. Slightly north of a village overlook. Imperial overlook. Unfortunately, the wiki only has zone. It doesn't have, like, region. And it definitely has no maps right now. Gonna be clicking through a bunch of pages here. Shinji Monastery. Is this the overlook? I literally. Oh, oh no, no, no! I think it's this. It's this. Ah, it's this. This is the event we want. It's actually already up, and it's a group event. So. Is my build strong enough for a group event on its own? Probably. Let's go. I, oh, well, I hope so. If you guys want to come with me, you want to get credit for this? I think it's up right now. I think it's this event here. How hot can it be? Oh, God. People in the live chat are telling me it bugged for them in their versions. That's, that's going to be real good. <laughs> we'll see. We, it might be good, guys. It might be good. You just barely managed to get to Marjorie's positions after yes. a Dragon's End run. You grabbed the Su-1 dialogue and started Special Outback's Agent collection. Of Ministry Damn. Of Intelligence, if you're human me, I could use your help with an ongoing investigation of mine. Yeah, I'll do it. Oh, he's bugged. He won't trigger. Yeah, he's bugged. <laughs> oh, God. Okay, well, unless it's on a time limit, I think he's just bugged, though. Okay, next. <laughs> next. Drive purists out of their secret meeting place in the Jaya Bluffs. So I've got to go escort Gale Hookbeak to the abandoned shrine and do that. We've done that before. It is weird the way that this expansion is set up. It's almost like... Just do a beeline through the story. Don't do it. Don't take your time with anything because at the end you'll get some collections to go and do all those other side quests anyway. So more efficient to do it this way. Oh, that mesmer, that event hits hard. Does that? Do they? Does they? Do they? Interesting. Well, we'll see if this other one's going on. We're gonna go quite far, but we should be right. Dun, 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 dun. I like my raptor skin, man. Got a little bit of that green in there. But most importantly, the badass, dragony looking stripes.
PoF and Hearthorn did the same thing. Do you think? I don't remember them really acting this way, but maybe uh, just my memory and my feeling on it is all very different. Okay, so here we actually see Gale Hookbeak is leaving. So I think that the event is resetting right now. I think someone just finished the event. And now I've got to wait, like, the full timer, so... His position was different when you did it, so he might have been stuck there. I don't know, I mean, he was telling me to speak to him, but I couldn't. I couldn't speak to him. And you would have thought as well, with that big telegraph there, other players would have done it too. So I, it does look to me like it's bugged for sure. This is a really nice combo here, by the way. Going, um... Vile Blast Stun into the Shroud Shotgun, into the Shroud 5, and then the Shroud 4 for the days. Like, they're just locked in place for ages. Possibly shotgun them again out into Whale of Doom. It's going to be nasty. It's, it, that would be a good combo even in uh, PvP stuff, just chaining those together. Wait for a dodge in between two of them. But it is really cold out here. This is interesting. There's, an, uh, there's a, a boss has spawned now. I saw a gull and there's a boss there now. Let's go back, I guess. That's bizarre. Oh, here you go. This might be it. Wait, is there no dialogue with us? Why do I do it this way? Is that really silly? That's fine, though. I don't really want to aggro on all the other mobs. Who is this player with me, and why does the why does the AI have absolutely no interest in them? There we go. They they turned for the last moment. What is it? It's a dead eye spamming auto attacks on a pistol. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. Do you know what? Oh, the Jade Bot's interesting. I, um... I stopped there to think, well, this player's just auto-attacking on a pistol, so I may as well stand next to them to give them quickness. But I should have just kept focusing on my own survivability, because I, I was getting the shit kicked out of here. Look, they're actually kiting away from me. Come on, friends, stay with me. You don't have to keep moving like that. There you go, just stay with me. I've got to heal more. I'm going to heal. I, I keep fucking this up. The bar. Dagger 2. Oh, God, Dagger 2 is so good for resisting. Assassin's attacking me there for some reason. Dagger 2 again. Take the bar again. Signet. Heal. I feel like I get slapped the second that telegraph appears, rather than at the end of it. That, that orb ability is kind of interesting. More protection, take that out. More healing, more healing, more healing. Oh, she stunned me. Bar. Probably unnecessary. Sorry, I pulled a deer in there. Sorry to the deer. You think you won? There's a. There we go. Uh, is that it? That was not for the event. It seems. Drive purists out of their secret meeting place in the Jive Bluffs. That boss did not count as driving the purists out. I think we have to wait for Gull Hookbeak, and then we have to do the whole event chain. And I, I don't know how long that's going to be. So, first attempt is a bug. Second attempt is a long wait on an event. Maybe we do the summit of the Assassin's Path. Let's see what they say here. Search for the lost record at the summit of the Assassin's Path. 
This is in a suspicious mound at the end of the jumping puzzle here in the Jaya Bluffs. Oh, wow. I wonder if that means they're going to make me do the uh, Kaineng jumping puzzle as well. So this will be my fourth time doing this, JP, I think. I'm all right to do that. It's quite short, quite sweet, quite simple. And that overlaps with the uh, the spawning of the other event. So We have a white commander tag down on Naga Isle. Oh, no, that's uh, Aureen's base. I quite like the white commander tag, actually. Not many people rep that. Wow, I say uh, short and sweet, but Jesus Christ. Does it start all the way back here? I've already missed it. WP, are you only stressed with these? Be frustrated with these because you're streaming? To a large degree, yeah. I mean, if I'm going to make videos out of it, I just I don't like this sense that I'm boring people, you know? Ordinarily, I think I'd be pretty chill with it and sort of just relaxing. And... Is that the way up? Maybe it's further back. I think it's further back. You know, if you're just playing, like, really hands-off for, like, seven hours to do one collection, and you're just sort of chilling and chatting with people in Discord and whatever, you know, the content works for that. Um, it just doesn't really work for, like, what I'm doing here, I think. And I was sort of hoping it would. The, what what I read there about Snargle is kind of the worst thing as well. It's like you do a little bit of progress and then there's dialogue and then a little bit more waiting around and then there's dialogue and then a little bit. So I can't even like bundle it. I can't even do all the stuff off screen and then just be ready for it. To splice it in, you know, it's... I don't know what I'm doing with it. But I mean, look, we got five more episodes, so we'll do whatever we want in them. It doesn't matter to me, really. In as much as I'd like to do those five episodes. We can get as much progress through these quests as possible. I want to say as well, anyone in the comments want to offer anything. If you think there's a really big bit of End of Dragons I haven't seen yet, let me know because I will try to get it in. I think I've shown off everything. Everything major. You know, there's these quests and the dialogue associated with these quests. After that, I think we've basically seen everything that, that really matters. You know, there's obviously like footage of other elite specs and stuff. But as far as I can see, this is the end, these these quests. So if there's something else, if there's a place like Club Canark that I haven't been, you know, I was getting quite a few messages over the past few days of people saying, yay, I've caught up with the Let's Play, blah, blah, blah. And that's awesome. So if, if people know, you know, you've seen the whole thing, let me know and I'll try to get it in there. Basically, anything story, anything voice acting, any new environments to go to, this last tier of Arborstone, really cool. All that stuff's my main priority. I, uh... I'm going to Jade Bot that. Screw it. Um... I'm, I also like, like, the, the mini achievements, you know, like the Raptor and stuff. That stuff's fine. You know, like the Raptor runs we did here. And I'll, I'll, I'll do some of those. Oh, my God. I can't make that jump for some reason. I'll do some of those, but, um... I would rather all that other stuff, you know, anywhere it takes me somewhere new. The only thing you can think of story-wise is character development notes in Sue One Reactor. That's another good point, actually. Jesus. But maybe I could do a whole second playthrough. Ah, uh, that's, that's not smart. But yeah, I think there are a lot of details in the story that I've missed. What I, what I kind of like the idea of is once I finish this Let's Play... Maybe do like some roundup, just like regular YouTube videos where I say, hey guys, here's a bunch of detail that I I missed in this place. Or like, um, just when I start doing Guild Wars Mysteries, you know, maybe if there's big cool details, you can show them off there. Overall, I think this is really cool though. I didn't do a series th like this for Heart of Thorns or POF, and I think this has been quite comprehensive. So I like that. Oh, and speaking of story playthroughs, I will obviously take my Thief through. You know, at a fast speed. Don't get me wrong, but I will do it. There's the suspicious mound we were looking for. I wonder, did I actually have to do the whole JP? I mean, in theory, I don't need to light all the bonfires, do I? Sift through. Uh, this patch of earth looks different from the surrounding area. The ground appears disturbed, as if to conceal something buried underneath. Oh, nice. We get a bit of uh, written dialogue here. See, this is good. 
This dry and litigious text is filled mostly with banal verdicts issued by the Ministry of Justice in disputed legal cases. However, there is one exception, a case between the Ministry of Purity and the Imperial Regent once Emperor Bit uh, Bitgaram. He had become uh, too ill to govern. Sorry. A case between the Ministry of Purity and the Imperial Regent once Emperor Bitgaram. What, what's a Bitgaram? Had become too ill to govern. I literally I don't know what this sentence means. Does anyone want to teach me? At the Emperor's, uh, as the Emperor's door was still a child at the time, the Minister ar argued that the powers invested in his office to combat the Risen, in particular that he speaks with the Emperor's voice, gave him the authority to overrule the candidate brought by the Imperial Court. The text record records a heated dispute, decided along razor-thin margins in favour of the Minister. Members of the review panel arguing against the minister's position reappear later in the book, charged with sedition and impure practices. Bitgaram became too ill to govern, and that was when he, the uh, case arose. It's just his name? I see, I understand it now. Yeah, it is. It's just his name. A case between the Ministry of Purity and the Regent once the Emperor had become too ill to govern. I see. So is this the name of the Emperor after um, Kisu? And yeah, later they stab all those people in the back who were trying to have honest debate in a, during peacetime. Oh, here we go. It looks like this. I guess we'll open... This chest. I don't know if this is daily or they, they have a thing where they say do it multiple times, but we may as well, right? Why not? Okay. Hey, WP. I haven't played enough to be able to tell you yet, but have you noticed any impact of the enhanced enemy scaling or getting new skills and stuff that the devs talked about? I've been really disappointed in it at the lower levels. Like, I don't really see any difference with the veterans. I've seen some new abilities on some elites. Basically, every time I've seen an enemy and I'm uh, and it like is a higher tier, I've sort of stood around it to see what it does. And yeah, it looks like they unlock some new abilities. But to be honest with you, if the devs hadn't explained that that was a thing before the expansion came out, I don't know whether I ever would have noticed or, or cared about any of that. It doesn't really seem to have had an impact, I don't think. And maybe when he's older, it doesn't feel any different to playing any other Guild Wars product, the I Guild Wars 2 product that I can sense. Maybe you guys have a different take on that, but because yeah. it tends to be that just like um, you know, it, let's take an enemy like a that uses a lava font or something, right? If it's just a regular enemy, the lava fonts are really weak, and you ignore them, and it doesn't really matter. You can walk around in them. If it's a champion that's doing it, the lava fonts blow you up because it's a champion. So now you're paying attention to the skill. They didn't have any sophisticated system in there. It's just that the skills scaled up. And so, like, the the end user experience is exactly the same, I think. You know? You're scared of certain animations now when it's a champion or it's an elite or whatever, where you weren't scared of them before. It's just that in uh, End of Dragons, you know, a rot wallow won't roll ever unless it's a certain tier or whatever. Or the, the Phoenix laser beam or, or whatever. So I, I don't know whether it really had an impact. I'm clicking these so crappily. Okay, well, look, these guys with their event driving the purists out. I don't know where it is. I don't know when it starts. It's more standing around, so let's not stand around. Let's go to the next one. <clears throat> Search for lost records beneath the Emperor's feet. So what we want to do is read a plaque on a statue... In the middle of the Emperor's Watchtower. The Emperor's Watchtower. That's the Ministry of Transit. That's June's Mansion. That's the Spirit Vestibule. Fishing Village. Imperial Overlook. Royal Court. Monastery Temple. Obstacle Course. Combat Arena. Orin's Enclave. Cat Island. <laughs> I do like Cat Island. Naga Domain, Derelict Temple, 
Aha, the Emperor's Watchtower. Okay, we want to go over here. Probably want to take a... Well, we don't need to take a taxi, but we want to go this way. Oh, God, I immediately just feel so much calmer and more relaxed and enjoyed when I actually know where I'm going and what I'm doing. Ah, I should have just um, bit the bullet Hello. and started using Wiki, probably on Friday, to be honest. We should have just been doing Wiki the whole time. You think the ministry just accept it. It's not great, but just accept it. Wiki makes the game better. At least for this, for this, uh, like, video series. AWP, you can set a chat cooldown. Might help a bit with the bot spamming. I, don't, I, I get the idea, but I don't think it will help that much, but it really, I mean, let's be real. You're still going to see the one message. It only spams in pulses anyway. What I really need to do is I just need to look at resolving that at some point after one of these videos. But I'm usually a bit, a bit blasted at the end, and I just want to go chill out or do something else. But I should do that. Here you go. I think it's this statue here. There's probably multiple ways I can deal with that. Oh, I love this song. This statue depicts Yusuku, his hand raised to hold back threats from the sea. The tile beneath his feet appears loose and easily movable. Perhaps it's worth further investigation? Check beneath the loose tile. Wow, we get another book. This book is a record of imperial speeches and commandments issued after the awakening of Zaitan in 1219 after the Exodus. The year is actually 1730 in the Canton calendar. Much of the parchment's faded, but small portions can still clearly be made out. Repelling this threat and preventing the risen dead from reaching our shores is our highest duty, and it will require extraordinary measures in kind. To that end, I call for our invincible navy to engage any enemy foolish enough to cross our seas. Also, I call for our ever faithful soldiers in the Ministry of Purity to root out any sign of their corruption taking root in our homeland. Let no expense be spared to protect our families and our shores, and let our people recognize the new authority. I bestow upon our minister, ministry, minister of Purity, in light of these dark and unprecedented times, know that in matters of security, he speaks with my voice. And rest assured, our walls are strong and our gates closely guarded. I like this. In a way, the Zaitan disaster is exactly what a kind of like um, isolationist, xenophobic society needs, you know. If, if they want to continue being fanatical about this stuff, they need enemies, right? They need a place to point the finger. They need something to say, aha, this is why the walls are closed. Aha, this is why we don't let people in. Aha, this is why we don't embrace X, Y, Z. And so then the Zaitan disaster gives them an enemy and it solidifies the worldview. I like that. Next. The Great Library. There's also... Oh no, yeah, all the... So hold on, the Ministry Gardens can't do because it's bugged. The Gyre Bluffs, he was just stand, not, not doing anything yet. Hmm, so two of them are on Saitang. These other ones are like completely elsewhere. Let's do the Great Library across the sea. So this has to be the Priory. I don't think it's going to be Cormier's Library. Though it would be really interesting to see what, <laughs> what they would do with us going back there. Okay, it's in the Dermond Priory archives. But when Wiki says the Dermond Priory archives, there you go, using the compass, pretty nice. When Wiki says the Dermond Priory archives, does it mean... Yeah, it's just downstairs, right? Because the other bit is the special archives, right? It's different. So let's go We're looking for some kind of a scroll, apparently. Man, the music in here, it's just... Oh, this is like so Guild Wars to me. I don't know. 
hold on, hold on. It's saying entering the middle room. Entering the middle room. But there's two doors. Traverse it clockwise until you hit the wall. Why is everything here written in Crichton? All those loops and swirls. Final and words of Zayri to his supporters is definitely this, universal. isn't it? Wow, this How is new. Oh my god. I can't believe it. This will have been here when we were looking for Danica's stuff too. This will have been here. I just totally missed it. This scroll rack appears innocuous at first glance, but on closer inspection includes a roll of parchment written in Canton script. Perhaps this is what Balam Lee was searching for. Final words of Zayri to his supporters. Our worst fears have been realized. The Luxon delegation sent their surrender, and the Ministry of Purity's allies in court are ascendant. With the war concluded, my contacts tell me the Ministry's eyes have turned inwards, and they're gathering lists of dissenters and enemies. I'm sure our efforts to oppose their rise to power have not been forgotten. Yeah, so it, he's going to be culled, basically. He knows he's got to get out of dodge. I plan to petition the court one last time, but should the worst come to pass, our resistance must continue. Instruct our friends to go into hiding. Use our hidden network to communicate. I've included the means to decipher their locations in this letter. Share it only with those you trust and who are committed to fighting the ministry's work. Though I may not live to see it, I know we shall pass through this darkness and emerge to a brighter future. Should I fail today, your efforts will be my legacy. Oh my god. What do you think his fate will be? <laughs> So search for lost records in the markets of New Kaineng. A bug and an event. Oh, this is way better than I, I was feeling very doom and gloomy about it a second ago, but this is this is great. So this is a used bookstall northwest of Lutgardis Mar Lut Market. We're gonna scroll down. Ooh, I always do that. I always think I'm going back to Guild Wars One's kind of <laughs> Lutgardis. Luck Goddess Market? Is that down here somewhere? Wait. I mean, Luck Goddess is, um, is Echovald stuff, so surely it'd be near there. It's at the Luck Goddess Plaza, so there's a plaza here. There it is. I see it. We're on our way, everybody. Um, there's a used book stall. Northwest of the POI. I really think this is my favorite map of the X pack. Every time I just get here and look at it, you know, and I feel the vibe and the ambience. I don't know. What, what do you guys think? I, let me ask people in the live chat. Do you guys have like a clear, um, like, boom, this is my favorite map. Easy. Do you have like a really clear idea of it? Because no kidding. I, don't, I, I think I think for me it is it is kind of like it's it's that enough ahead. I wish it was the Jade C, but I really think they ruined that map by making it a meta map. Like the vibe. We're looking for a book stall here, by the way. So keep your eyes out. Oh, there it is. It's over there. New Kainang law clearly states Sai that merchants must provide a you. reasonable return policy when the customer is dissatisfied. Yeah, see, I like Saitung too, because I kind of like that start of an adventure peaceful vibe, you know? It's one of the reasons I really like um, uh, Queensdale as well. Like, I had a really good feeling when, uh, like, on part six of this, when we finished the main story and I came back um, to Saitung, it was like, oh, yeah. I like this place, <laughs> you know. Excuse me. All right, the used book store. This street store is stuffed to the brim with mounds of aging text. Most of them are unlabeled. Looks like they're being offered at no charge. Could Balamri's lost record be buried somewhere in it? What is this? Young Baran, Prince of the Luxons. This text describes the adventures of a 10-year-old Luxon and his trusty sidekick Nightshell, the Siege Turtle. It sounds like it was written for children and probably isn't historically accurate. Oh my god. I hope they write the I hope that one of the Arena Net writers writes this little story. Make it like that story about, you know, the family that like 
you know, they're on an adventure and it's there's a forest. We can't go around it. We can't go over it. We have to go through it. And there's a field. We can't go around it. We can't go over it. We have to go through it. And don't they lose, like, members of the party along the way? You know, it's like a short little kid's tale, you know? Like, do it like Goldilocks or something. Nice and short and with some nice pictures. It might be the arrival of Pal Palawa Joko. Oh, what do these guys think um, of Joko? I'm free. I'm free. <laughs> what is this? This one describes how Palawa Joko, the eternal monarch of all, used his magical powers to save Cantha from devastating floods caused by the awakening of the Elder Dragon's Zaitan. That sounds fishy. That's excellent. I don't know how they got that in there, but he managed to smuggle some propaganda down here. Um, check the registry of offenses. This surprising... Oh, this one's salacious. Hold on, let's see this one down here then. Uh, ritualism and the spiritual mind. This one's offering advice for using the ancient art of ritualism to find inner peace and relieve stress. There's no mention of magical techniques, but several suggestions for stylish blindfolds. Um, what about the saga of Rurik? <laughs> what? This one's about the Ascalonian Prince Rurik, who led his people to cry out after the searing. Several liberties have been taken to make it more exciting, including a long fight scene on Mount Maelstrom. Hey, this is good. This is what the community does, you know, nostalgia goggles, and it's it's much better than you remember. Now, guys, it's a crappy cutscene where a tiny little snowdrift falls down on him, and he's going like, Ugh! and then Dagnar swings his axe with like a totally bog standard axe swinging animation, and you hear a crunch sound. And that's it. Alright, it wasn't great. I do like, uh, you know, meta commentary about the game aside. I do like the idea that it was actually just kind of like a brutal, sad, cold death. And there wasn't really much to it. And now people are like, acting like it was a huge fight. You know. Martyrdom and all that. Anyway, uh, so the Registry of Offences. This surprisingly salacious book gives a brutal accounting of various families that profited heavily from the short-lived purist regime. This looks like what Balam Ree was describing. Now, hold on. I thought salacious. I guess I thought salacious meant something that it it mustn't mean. Define salacious. Yeah, I think ArenaNet have used the wrong word here. I always thought that salacious meant like sexual, like crudely sexual. And that's what Google says. Having or conveying undue or inappropriate interest with regard to sexual matters. That's what salacious means. So calling this a salacious book? I mean, wait, maybe that is intended. Are they suggesting like rape and stuff? This surprisingly salacious book gives a brutal accounting of various families that profited heavily in the short-lived pur purist re regime. I sort of feel like they, um, they're just using salacious as like a synonym for controversial or something. Or like unfiltered. But I'm not sure that's actually right, is it? You've seen salacious used in non-sexual non contexts a lot? Really? It might be a British English, American English thing then. Anyway, purchase this book. I, I bought it, did I? I thought they were giving these away. Okay, these scrolls are filled with logistical data from 1689 and they seem to imply that the Ministry of Purity accu used accusations of sedition to concentrate wealth into the hands of their strongest supporters. A short forward is written on the collection in a different hand. This is uh, going to be him, isn't it? Zayri. They're on to us. My sources say at least three of our sites have been compromised, possibly more. We need to be more careful. These are the most critical records of my followers have collected. I've enclosed copies for you to make in case my group is next. We need to isolate ourselves so that one discovery won't collapse the whole network. This will be the last time I contact you. May we meet again in a brighter future. Dude, I'm really, I'm all about this quest line. This is really cool. And dude, that little comment there about Joko getting a little bit of influence here in Canther is, is really good. That's like where the different stories cross over and that's always a, a treat to me. Okay, so, let's go do the Tengu event, and hopefully get into a new Saitang instance where the thing's not bugged, I, I don't know. And now this, and then that's this quest that's stalled and finished, basically. So, Marjorie and Dragon's End, this, 
Uh, Snargle, at least, we can make a lot of progress, it looks like. So that's nice. I think I'm in the same instance again here. I could go really nuclear on this, and I could swap to EU. Um, but on the other hand, it's quite late at night, so let's not worry about it. And I feel bad that so much of this uh, this series has been on EU, actually. Pleasure to meet you, Commander. He's in a different place yes. now. Oh, this one I works know who now. You are Special Agent Tang of the Ministry of Intelligence. If you'll humor me, I could use your help with an ongoing investigation of mine. Why are you trusting an outsider oh, with this? We've been subverting the political sovereignty of mainland Tyria for decades. Only fair you get to do the same. I'm kidding. I need someone on the inside I can trust. That you're an outsider is precisely why I can count on you. That just that gave me a real... My head went down a rabbit hole there, and I just had a weird thought. Imagine... You know how POF and uh, Heart and this expansion, End of Dragons, they both gave us, like, huge new environments to explore. Full of, like, humans, basically. It's going to be really weird to have that experience, but it's all char. You know, if they ever actually did do a char expansion, it's like... Just char map after char map after char map. I think that's going to be really kind of interesting. Or Asura, you know. Depths of Tyria and there are, there are like Asura everywhere. Dwarves as well, I suppose. What are... Um, uh, sorry, who are the purists? There's a cult of sorts. One that wants to bring Cantha back to her days of isolationism and xenophobia. Used to be a fringe ideology. But... They've grown in numbers in recent years. Like a many-headed dragon, they never seem to stay down. No matter how many times we extinguish them. This is a good introduction to the whole questline. Are you doing this alone? I requested support from the local Minsec precinct. All I got was one rookie. Officer Saren is on our side, so keep an eye out for them. A little green, but their heart's in the right place. Wasn't that most of Jizzlewood in the Ice Cream Saga? Well, I, I wouldn't say... I mean, definitely... Um, not Jizzlewood. Definitely Grothmar. Jizzlewood too, I suppose. But it's like all a war zone. It's not like peacetime. It's not like civilization, you know? I don't know. And obviously it's not an expansion either. Which just means it has a totally different vibe to me. Like it doesn't land. Among Shinji's most prominent sycophants, or upper society, as they like to be referred dwell traitorous hearts. The Ministry of Purity is gone, but a fascist autocracy represents the good old days some wish to return to. Can't imagine why. I suspect a number of these so-called purists are attending this ostentatious affair. Let libation loosen lips. Identify the secret purists. And then, let's end this party with a bang. Shall we? Okay. I knew I could count on you. I'll conjure you a nice disguise so you can blend in with the rest of these well-to-dos. That about wraps up the briefing. If you get caught, I'm afraid I'll have to disavow any Hold on, this is a group event existence. and it's not like a I'm combat. Kidding. Good luck out there. You're a fair bit taller with that disguise. Sorry, it's only temporary. Oh, this is cool. This is crazy. I didn't do this. This is awesome. Oh my god, but it's a group event. Uh, if you guys oh, want to come and help. Oh my god, and I'm on a time Waiter. limit. Seconds, please. Think I'll hit the dance floor. Oh, hold on. I'm Lady just acting like a waiter. Picked up a few moves in my travels on the coast. The next meeting is at his mansion. You'll love it. Though his bot is dreadfully annoying. Hello. That much gold doesn't simply vanish. I have my suspicions about where those funds are going. Oh my god, this is like the uh, Divinity's Reach, like, Living World Season 3 parties and stuff, but it's an event in the open world. How oh, awesome is this? Yo, dude, can you give me some food? Oh no, here's some food. Maybe? So I give them stuff and they'll... And then I can get information out of them. This is also like that POF heart. This is exquisite. Staff, bring another platter round, would you? There's some food, there's some food. Sorry, how is, how is this an investigation? Just feeding them. 
Yeah. Just saying, people act all offended when you bring her up. But if you read some of Reiko's stuff... Yeah, look, we don't... We, we, we shouldn't have well-read people if they're... You know, if they're not on our team. That's right, Arena Net. Another serving, if you would. You tell him. The next meeting is at his mansion. You'll love it. Though his bot I'm going to keep going with the food on. here. My, you like dancing. Mostly because I don't know where I'd get the water from. I like this. Can I dance for progress? Mansion. Actually, this looks totally doable. Though his bot is dreadfully annoying. Jesus, this is actually ringing some bells. Maybe I did come here, but not under the, the effects of The next meeting is at his mansion. You'll love it. Though his bot is dreadfully annoying. But I'm sure you've heard all about it. No one's seen him since the hearing. Some song and dance would liven things up. Staff, a bit of music? Nah, I'm so um, That woman? Well, I can't even grab any more here. I can grab this one. Hold on, the mini map actually has icons. It oh, looks I'm like there should be water. Dying to tell you about the fiasco here, here, at the here. Empress's court. Oh, nobody's thirsty anymore, though. Oh, and it's not, it's not water, it's wine. Oh, it actually looks like a uh, champagne. What's this, though? Music? Who, how do I give them music? Over here. Is this just giving them an instrument or playing them an instrument? I mean, surely I'd have to play. Oh, I can play. Oh, these people, like, they're very... Uh, Oh, that's awesome. It's a very selective group, but I believe you'll fit in well. I'll put you in touch with our director. This one's on me. This is very cool. I am a bit concerned as we're going to explode out into a fight. Hi. I'm simply parched. What must a lady do to get service around here? Bum, 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 bum. Waiter? Waiter it sounds like uh, the main so theme. Kind. Okay, I'm coming, I'm coming. Don't change your mind. Here, look, look. Service. Service. Oh my god, these all people want to get drunk. Look at this. I can understand getting them drunk. You get information out of them there. Disowned him entirely. And for what? Some differences in opinion? Overreacted, if you ask me. Just saying, people act all offended when you bring her up. Yeah, 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 we you read that one. some of Reiko's stuff, my friend. Turned in her resignation without a word. Worth raising a few eyebrows over, I'd say. Um. This cuisine is to die for. Another serving, if you would. There you go. All right, well, there you go. We get lost law, then a mail. Oh, wow. One of the people at the party is just happy that I did Ladies that. Ladies and gentlemen, if... I, I think we got a story here, though, so hold on. I'm afraid the festivities will be coming to a premature end today. Because there are enemies of the state among you, purists. We know who you are. Surrender yourselves to the Ministry of Intelligence immediately. And the Ministry of Security. Purity will rise again! All right. The Ministry of Purity is gone. You're fighting for nothing. Do not resist the rest. Please. All right, well, let's try and break some bars and see what we got. Oh. Holy shit. Yeah, she hurts. She's almost killed me instantly. This build is not cut out for this. This is not the kind of, like... I mean, I'm wondering if even the power version is going to be good enough here. Let me close this male dialogue. I, I need to be able to stick and shroud longer to get my signets back faster. If I kill, I also, the thing is, I want to, oh shit. The thing is, I also, I need to, um, I kind of need to keep these guys alive so that I can tag them with the, the locust signet. Otherwise, I'm not going to have the re sustain that I need. She's a mirage here, by the way. In the fucking staff thing. Two. 
have to stay away from these uh, phantasms. Shit, how long's my heal skill been there? Okay. Okay, killing the phantasms looks like it's it's really not necessary. Because they just despawn. Okay, we got our friends dead. I have an ally, which is nice. Signet there again. Heal skill. Break the bar. Hit her. Nice cheap, quick 20k. Oh, her break bar's down, but her clones are still owing away, which is quite cool. Alright, she phased. Where is she? Oh, she just stealth. Hey, she's a bit like the white mantle. Suddenly pistol feels pretty good here. Well, axe would have felt good too, I don't know. I should remember that Lich is actually of value in terms of like sustain and shit. Like seriously. The thing is, now that I don't have all the concentration, we don't have the quickness side of it. Ah, I should have held that. Oh, you know what? The signal's okay even because of the clones, even with her friends dead. Okay, 70%. This is a good fight. Got a couple of allies coming in now. Oh. Started playing one handed and I'm getting attacked. Uh, we've got seven minutes as well on the timer, so the timer seems perfectly nice. I really do want to read this law, but just give me a second. I can't remember seeing this the first time I was here. The other thing I need to do is remember to stand near these players, like this char. He's going to like this quickness. It's going to help us massively. You're right there. He's going to go down. Another dead mongrel. Oh, I love Spectral Grass, man. Look at that. Breaks the bar. Gives me all my fucking trout back. Instantly. It's just so good, dude. The skill's absolutely busted. Now, the question is, do I risk going for a res here? Oh, he got himself up with a Jade Bot. Jade Bot's a bit OP, I think. Let's heal. Here, the signet can tag the clone you back there. Stop us. Okay, they use a three. Oh, 28k shotgun. Do you guys see that shit? Because we've ramped up the might and we, she's below 50% now. We're just going to nuke her here. Whee. Hey, and we got an achievement. Purist shenanigans. We've now seen all of them. We make a damn fine team. You think so? You really mean it? I do, Officer Saren. I shall give a glowing assessment of your work to your supervisor and commander. Much obliged for your assistance. Until we meet again. Yeah, well, I had a good little uh, char ally there with me. I don't know. I think another player as well. Yeah, this guy. I don't know. Was this person dead or fighting? Yeah, cool stuff. Uh, just watch your season six thoughts, WP. Great video. Thanks very much, man. It's good to see. You. Thank you. Oh, and Narciso. You just saw the new video. It seems to be doing fairly well. Oh, I don't know. I saw some of the response when I started um, this part of the Let's Play, but I haven't seen it for a little while. Okay, what's this message here? If you guys have thoughts, conversation about that, you can let me have it. I'm happy to talk about it. It's all End of Dragons related. So Juwon Rao says, Gux, well done. My sources tell me you were involved in thwarting the unpleasantness at the monastery. And I'm a man of my word. If anyone asks, this item is still in processing vault 355. Awaiting review by the Sensitive Materials Subcommittee. I look forward to further collaboration. From JR. Can I read this though? Nice work, I'll confess. I've been looking forward to this one. The look on those punks' face when they realise an angry dragon slayer was in the room with them is something I'll always cherish. I had to file two hours of paperwork to release this record and I don't regret a minute of it. I hope it helps. And obviously, reset just dinged as well. But we can read these. This book describes how Empress Heberagi formally disbanded the Ministry of Purity a few years into her reign. The effort involved putting down a rebellion... So, how many Empresses have there been? Is this... Because I thought there were two. But I swear I'm seeing lots of names. The first Empress was the saviour of the, the place that ended the, the rule of the Ministry of Purity. Is that right? The effort involved in putting down a rebellion of the Ministry's loyalists who had gathered in Zendaijun to oppose her decree in the aftermath. 
Sorry, sorry, sorry. This effort involved putting down a rebellion of the ministry's loyalists who had gathered in Zendaijan to oppose their decree. In the aftermath, and we saw all those bodies in the other quest, purist affiliations were formally outlawed and the works of the Ministry of Purity were gradually swept away by the Empress's reforms. Sounds a lot like what the purists did. <laughs> Just now it's the other team. On the inside cover is a handwritten list of names added by different writers, accompanied by a small note. They're still out there. And then here a last request. This list of financial records and personal files is indecipherable at first glance. However, upon closer inspection, it appears to be tracing the wealth and gatherings of suspect purist sympathizers. A small memo is pinned to the top. I'm sure if there's anybody left to read this, uh, sorry, I'm unsure if there's anybody left to read this, but if this message is ever found, don't expect to find anything more here. I've compiled a list of agents and, uh, and enterprises my grandfather was convinced were tied to the old purist regime, plotting against the Empress from within. It was his last request that I do this. I'm honoring it, but I can't indulge these fantasies anymore. I'll be reporting this, his suspicions to the Ministry of Security. If there's anything of note in these conspiracies, they'll take it from there. If some sort of secret uh, resistance against the purists did exist at one time, it died out long ago. Oh, Zayri. I'm loving all this. I never thought they'd tell us that much about what happened to Zayri afterwards, but there you have it. Now, I got two there. That's quite interesting. So, how's my achievement doing? Okay, so just drive the purists out of their secret meeting place at the Jive Bluffs. We gotta, we gotta do this with the Tengu now, basically, and then we're good. That's that whole quest done. Potentially, it might also just segue into another quest where we, but I don't know where they'd go afterwards, so I don't know, but pretty satisfied with that. And hey guys, no Dragon's End on this one. Just maybe a bit of waiting around with the Tengu here. Okay, so Cossage says, yeah, there are two empresses. And do we get the names of any other rulers than the two empresses? Do we get the name? We got the name of her father, right? But absolutely no detail. There's just no stories about any of them except the two empresses. Am I right? I mean, how many even is it? 250 years? What can we expect there with this setting? You could have as minimal as four, really, couldn't you? If they're all long lived. Four rulers, but as many as like, I don't know, seven, eight, nine. It's tricky to tell. Uh, I'm gonna go see if Gull is at the, the temple, at uh, the town first, and then I'll move over to the temple if not. New event. Oh, here you go. Revive Gull. No! Thank you, Roofjaw, in 60 seconds. Oh, God, I gotta. Oh, uh, I think we'll be fine. 48 seconds. Tigers are dying and leaving. Tigers are dying and leaving. Oh, good. He instant, instantly spawned. Oh, and then there was Bitgaram. Okay, so that could have been the father or the son of Kuyovok. But I think they meant son, but type of predecessor. Um, yeah, I think um, I think I remember you messaging me about that actually. So Kiabok and his what wife. What are they doing all the way out here? Died in the tsunami. Nothing good. My child, stay calm. Don't simply react. Take in your surroundings. You, all of you, some nerve you have strutting on our sacred ground. Leave now. This is your only warning. I think this little birdie's fallen out of their nest. Best to put them out of their misery. I'll tear those purest roads to shreds, along with the coward under If you won't leave, you'll die. Okay, so looking at the live chat, it looks like we actually have a good sense of the timeline, which is great. I'll probably just look at it in a big long row rather than trying to figure it out reading it as it's been presented there. But that's cool. It actually sounds like, yeah, you at least get the names. Yeah, like a visual family tree, exactly. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking right now that I'd like, yeah, for sure. Dude, the pistol too feels so good when you get it just right. 
I wonder if NG Pistol 2 feels like that, and I just never realized it. I mean, it's basically the same Look weapon. at them run! Without you, we would have been overpowered. I owe you. Father, are you okay? We fought back and won. Reclaimed what's ours. Battles have no end, just lulls. We mustn't get too comfortable. Kyo, Lightcrest, keep watch. I'm not convinced we're alone. Shame that the place so Okay, we heard all that dialogue already. So there we go, last one. Gux, impressive, rooting out the purists and gathering uh, what the Ministry of Security could not could not is no small feat. I'll confess I had my doubts, but those have been well laid to rest. Here, the promised documents. I had to give up my front row tickets to Mecha Brawl for a bribe. So you'd better put them to good use. <laughs> this guy's really, really had to spend a lot here. From a friend. Celestials keep you, friend. I have another set of records to add to your collection. Swipe from the office of Kainane's own chief censor of the archives. You are right to distrust them. I'm sorry to say they've grown more aggressive in their pruning, withdrawing and destroying almost any mention of the Ministry of Purity's purges. Who knew our dear old Emperor would be so sensitive in his old age? Jokes aside, the scale of the Ministry of Purity's efforts to cover their crimes is staggering, and I fear that the damage to our cause should they uh, sorry, and I fear damage to our cause should they succeed. Once the living memory of their deeds fades, if there's no record of it, how can we inspire our descendants to resist them? I've advised my allies to begin collecting every incriminating scrap they can find and to distribute them through our network to preserve the truth. I strongly suggest your followers do the same. So there you have it. Now, let's um, let's see how this one ends. Now, Balamri is not at Arborstone, right? No, Valamri wasn't it. It wasn't Arborstone. It wasn't Arborstone. I thought for a second it might have been someone that I first met on Sai Tung, but no. Oh my god, I can't believe it's nearly two in the morning already. I, I, I honestly, I can't believe this. I started this episode just way too late at night. Right. Okay. And here's the thing. I want to get a good sense. Where's Snargle and stuff as well? You know. So when I load in. I want to go up the stairs on the right, straight away. Hey! Cool! I didn't know this. Look, now that we finished the other quest, the banner of House Who Helts is here. I'll do what I and Valeria's here. Will you meet again? Thanks for everything you did for us. I'd still be hunting around the dirt without you, destroying every article of clothing I own. How's it going for the new Who Helts? We actually had our first little reunion recently. Only those still local to Cantha, although we're planning something bigger in a few months. We're all figuring out what it means to be the remains of a house, but some of the conversations have been enlightening. As an example, we all have the same freakishly long second toe. <laughs> I was voted to act as the head of our house, even though that doesn't mean anything politically. I'm probably just on the hook to make reservations for future get-togethers, but I'm still honored. Wow, I feel like she's kind of underplaying that. I love that detail about the toe. Ugh. Is she going to repeat or has she got something new? We actually had our first little reunion. Oh, that's recently. a shame. That's cool, though, we man. To local to Cantha, Damn, I'm glad I saw that and didn't miss bad. that. It just keeps on giving, doesn't it? By the way, I've heard that this hero challenge is bugged and it gives a you POF credits. Then. Let's see. Let's see how you fare. I've heard that this counts as a POF hero challenge because they like copy pasted how they did it in Arvest in a uh, Sun's Refuge or something. Well fought. I could learn a thing or two from you, it seems. We are lucky to have you as an ally. Yeah, look. I mean, I didn't notice this when I first played it, but look, we get a small tin coffee pot. Crossing the most most levels of Elonian society, offering coffee, displays, generosity towards guests, visitors, and friends, regardless of rank. And we get trade contracts from it. This is POF stuff. But it still progressed my End of Dragons uh, <laughs> XP. So, hey, who knows? Kind of a worth as a nice quick little thing to do. So, I guess, actually, this dialogue box here is probably what I'm looking for. So, let's go upstairs and have a look. This is a place of refuge. You wish that the Luxons had a similar story? Um, 
I mean, yeah, it would be nice. But so would a hundred thousand things be nice. So I'm, I'm just going to try and appreciate what they did do, you know. On the other hand, I kind of like that the Luxons don't. Because I kind of, I believe in the breaking of symmetry, you know. I really don't like it all to be... You know, I kind of like the idea that the Luxons are just totally fucked. You know, the Kurzics have managed to cling on in some way. But that doesn't, you know, that... that Breaking the symmetry is what stops this feeling like a cartoon to me, you know, so I, I kind of wow. like that. Wow, never thought I'd get my hands on this. I know what I'm reading on my break. Hi, I'm back, and I've got lots to share. Hi, welcome back. Still nothing on my end, how about yours? Oh, she'll give me hints. What do you think Great Library Across the Sea is? If it's across the sea, that must mean it's in Central Tyria. Well, does it? <laughs> Do scholarly organizations come to mind? It could be in one of their archives somewhere. <laughs> no, hinting pretty good there. Mist of Zendaijun. I'm not sure about this one. It's a fairly mysterious place. Perhaps the temple building itself could have some records. Any hints about the emperor's feet? The emperor at the time was written was probably Emperor Yusoku. Are there any buildings or statues dedicated to him on Shingji? They'd be pretty old by this point. I like all these descriptions, but then it's also kind of like I did end up having to resort to wiki. And it would have been a nightmare to try and follow them. But I like that. I, I don't know where I, where I am on this. Um, any ideas where I can find the markets of Shingji? I think it should just be a market store, hiding in plain sight. There are lots of street stores in Luck Gardis Plaza. That's good. That's a very good direction. All right, here you go. Here they all are. My family immortalized in these pages. I. <laughs> I didn't expect to get so emotional, but I'm glad history will know the truth. You don't know how much this means to me. Promise you'll visit when I'm done writing. I'll have a signed copy for you. You never know, it might be worth something someday. <laughs> I guess that's usually after the author dies, though. Ah, the grueling sacrifice and self-flagellation of the literary process. I love it! Great. I'm glad you're enthused about that. I didn't even realise, by the way, until she said that. It didn't even click for me that Zayri and she's Balamri. Was I supposed to be aware of that connection the whole time? I'm that stupid. I'm that narrow that I only just clicked that she's literally <laughs> in it from his family, a descendant. I'm sure that was like the opening line of the quest as well or something, and I totally missed it. All right, Xingji Island Lost Histories. So this will be all the accounts in one item, so I can delete all the others, hopefully. Oh, my God. If they deleted the others as well, that would be really good. Yeah, here they all are. Hey, and you can actually read them in order now, too, which is almost a better way of doing it. Yeah, look, you can see the years going along. So we can sort of see the rise and fall in the Ministry of Purity. Yeah, that's cool. Um, so anyway, I'll probably have to delete these. This item is not required to complete the collection. Can be discarded. Oh, look, they don't make you type it in. Oh, Arena Net, you're learning so well. This is awesome. Check this out. Oh. <laughs> these would be a nightmare to type in too because they've got like dates and commas and all caps and all kinds of places to trip you up. Thank you. I really have to start writing, but come back later to read the full volume. And I do, uh, and I do mean have to. I'm not sleeping until this is finished. Zayri would be proud. Okay, so there's another collection here. I guess this is Snargle. <laughs> I think this is the Snargle thing. Hey, he's not going to have anything to say to me because I didn't progress him since we last spoke. Hello, Snargle. The locals here have never seen my kind before. Oh, here we go. I'm honored to represent the Char. <laughs> it's such a good line. They know what they're doing with that line, and that's fucking hilarious to me. Okay, so, oh my god, guys, we did like two of the quests there. We're done with them. The Secret of All, I might just find these books off screen. Actually, maybe this is... Read the Secret of the Vaults. I can't like control, shift click anything here for Wiki to bring this up. Okay, so... Wow, Wiki actually has mini-map stuff for this. Let's finish this here. Let's finish this. And then what we have is Marjorie, Snargle, and Albax. 
Oh, I feel like I'm running out of content now. Suddenly, I feel like I'm running out of content. Okay, hold on. So let's go. Um, I don't know. Let's skiff our way up there. So five is the one that I'm missing. So I'm going to go to five first. I can't believe it. Based on what I can see on the wiki map here, they all look really obvious to see, which is just like super blowing my mind. Why am I so bad at this? Thing? Skiff. Right, let's go. I should have done this first time. Oh god, it's the blackout. So we got a we got a long sail here, but I'm happy with that. I'm fine with that. Hey, WV, just checking in. Isn't this a little life for you? Yeah, I'm just staying up quite late at the moment. Um, like over the weekend, I was waking up super late, and then I was uh, playing Days Gone right until morning. Well, near enough to morning, and then falling asleep. I'm getting to bed before the sun rises, which is good. But uh, we are now leaving the, sh the crappiest part of the year. Oh, spring. Spring is coming. So soon that will probably change. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I'm getting to bed. But, yeah, I'm waking up quite late. And then I'm getting here quite late. Which kind of, you know, it's a good thing that we picked NA for today, actually. Because I am at a, a, a late hour. So a lot of EU people in, uh, in the sleep. I'm hoping that people would usually be watching in EU, they can they can watch this while they're at work tomorrow. <laughs> you wish you could get the Albax quest? Oh, uh, did you do? I can't. I can only tell you, it, it would suck to finish that meta and miss Albax because he's so hidden, right? And then like have no confidence you can get it done again. I actually have a question for people in the comments, people in the live chat. Do you, uh, are people like super regularly beating the meta now? Is it, because I'm kind of wondering, I'm kind of worried there'll be a bit of brain drain. And by that, I mean, people get the turtle and never return. So they learn a lot. And in theory, there should be something going on here. But because there's not any extra um, loot incentive, that even despite the nerf to the bite, and even despite the nerf to the tail, maybe the maps aren't succeeding that well anyway i mean look I'll, I'll tell you we will get a whole group together and we'll do it you know i i don't think that we should have any problems i have a lot of confidence with you guys but you know i'm a little i'm interested in whether maybe the the rates are going up by the way yeah in a previous part i said i didn't know what the bite meant the bite is the swap thing how regularly suwon swaps to the other side of the arena so when they nerfed the bite by 50 percent or whatever it was that's a pretty big nerf too, in my opinion, because a lot of people couldn't figure out the swap. I think once you see the te the ground telegraph and you could trusted that a swap was happening, you could move in position really well. But a lot of players were really struggling with that and were just running around all the all over the place. So 50% less tails, less bites. I mean, the whole fight looks like it's a lot smoother to me. You failed it every time. You're not interested in trying it anymore. Brutal. You should do it when we do it next. I don't know if you're EU and RNA. I'll probably do it on on EU. In like the last episode of this Let's Play, we're gonna do it again, and we'll uh, you know we'll talk to Albax, we'll talk to Marjorie, we'll do it again. We'll cap it off to finish these quests. So uh, and I, I'm 100% confident we'll, we'll be able to do it. Unless all those people that were very comfortably doing it with us before are <laughs> just gone already. But I, I hope they're still here. This is only week three. Actually, that kind of blows my mind to think of it that way. Isn't that crazy that this expansion's three weeks old already? This is the third goddamn week. I mean, maybe I'm just describing that weirdly. How many days has it been? It's only been 14 days, actually. We've started the third week, but we haven't lived a full third week, right? Guild Wars 2 Efficiency says less than half that finished the story have failed the meta. What does that mean? Even tried it? I mean, look, that's efficiency. I mean, that's a beautiful stat. Hold on, I've got to talk about that stat in a second. But what? Hold on, let's let's grab this thing, shall we? Okay, so it's under apparently. Just just to be clear again, I am looking for the secret of the vault, volume five. 
apparently it's right under that bridge. Where the bridge... What if it's on the bridge, though? I mean, Wiki has really narrowed it down for me here. Apparently it's like right about... Here somewhere. I mean, what the hell? Let's have a look. Maybe it's up. I'm just gonna, like, scan my eyes. Oh, maybe it is up the bridge. What's the best thing to check? Let's climb up the bridge. Okay, so... Guild Wars 2 efficiency yeah, says... Just let me get this clear from the live chat here. Guild Wars 2 efficiency says... Than less... That less than half of the players who beat the story... Have failed the meta. But do, what does that mean? Does that mean they tried the meta and they failed it? And they have no successes under their belts? What it sounds to me like is that's a stat that shows just how few people give a shit about open world. That's that's how that sounds to me. That sounds like they're saying basically, look, 60%, the majority of players are just doing the story and then they're leaving. They don't care about the meta map. And you know why that's such an... If that is what that stat is, that's really insane because this is efficiency. These are people dedicated and tuned enough with the community to understand what efficiency is and put their keys on it. And if the proportion is already that bad, if the proportion is already that low, imagine what it's like for the normal player base. I mean, that that's why, and you can see it in my season six episode, that's why I argue so hard, hard for ArenaNet to integrate this other stuff, give the side quests a proper home and so on, because people miss it. If it's not on the golden path, they miss it and they don't give a crap. You have to like grab them and sit them down and say, do what, play the stuff we made, you know? I mean, that's my honest opinion on it. And, that, and a stat like that really goes to show it. But maybe I'm misinterpreting the stat. Maybe another way of thinking of it is um, the majority of people actually do the story on, on, on efficiency. Do the story. Is it in this chest? Isn't there going to be a key to get in it? No? The weird double open is strange. No, it's not in the chest. But we're totally in the right place. I can feel it. I don't think I need to be, I should be looking at the environment this closely actually. This feels a bit broken suddenly. Uh the other the other way of looking at the stat is like the efficiency is you know most people are beating the meta. They they're not only doing the story but they're beating the meta as well and that's something. I suppose. This one's back to number 7. That's the drain inlet again, <laughs> which I'm not getting achievement progress from. Please return to your homes, lock your doors, and avoid household. Dude, this is crazy. I mean, here, look, I've got a waypoint right where it's supposed to be. It's got to be in this room. Ah, it was up. Hold on, I was here two seconds ago. How was I here and I didn't see that? How? How did that end up happening? Oh my god. All right, here we go. Number five. She was sitting on the counter when I told her. It was a quiet afternoon, no customers. She just stared at me a while. I couldn't tell what she was thinking, but I told her everything. I guess that's their young love, and it, you know they've approached each other about it. Okay, now finally we just need book nine. This is the last book. Apparently it's like here, near this POI. I would have thought it's in the vault, but... It doesn't appear to be, so let's see. This story's been kind of ruined for me, coming back and forth from it constantly. Oh, here it is. Here's book nine. I mean, how easy was that? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, what? How did I miss that? It's just right there. What? Well, there you go. Five AP for that. Why does that get five AP? I love you too. We'll find a way. Yours, you were. And there you go, then the tidal wave hits them. It's a good story, but, you know, we didn't really learn anything new in all these pages here. Well, there you go. So that's that one done. I keep clicking Marjorie, and it's so stupid of me. So what do we want to do? Albax or Snargle? 
Also, hold on. <clears throat> I'm gonna do a thing here now, alright? Are you guys ready? I'm gonna do a thing where I'm gonna look at every piece of content that I haven't done yet. Here we go. Ready? Let's take stock for these final four episodes. First of all, story journal. These are all challenges that I recognize. Find the marker for the Aetherblade Cave. Don't know about that one. These are just basically, you know, don't get hit by staff. We could basically tell what these achievements were when we missed them. Now, at the Dragon Lab, I do think we may have missed a bit of story. For sure. And I really think I should have played the Dragon Lab multiple times looking back at it. Complete these special mission parameters inside the camp. This is interesting. We might do this. Special mission parameters inside the speaker's camp. Interesting. Nika's Vengeance. Defeat Captain Farwa under the influence of a special dish. This was the thing in the story we messed up because I was too busy reading. We found we missed some books in June's mansion. But otherwise, it's just do it fast and so on. And a couple of instabilities. Might like to do that. I'm going to eyeball that one. The end of the game, these were just simple, you know, stand strong against the void. Check in with the representatives of all allied forces while placing extractors. I'm not sure about that one. I'll eyeball it. Why not? Okay, so that's story journal. Now, general... Screaming. They didn't do it anything for this expansion. Get away from me. Are you serious? Getting into that vault is not as intricate as I thought it was. Now, end of dragons. Okay. <clears throat> Canther. The six. We got to get the statuettes. How do we do this again? Just, just from opening chests, right? It doesn't look like it does anything. It's just, hey, a fun little mastery point for us. Masters of the Unseen. Open chests. Do the dailies, like festivals. 15 days of dailies. I need to actually do these. But that's not Let's Play necessary. That doesn't matter. Oh, Jade Bots. we got to look at Jade Bots on one of these last parts. We've got to do that. We've got to do the Jade Bot workbench. I haven't done that. That's actually a huge feature. Equip a tier 10 core. And then just weeklies. So that's fine. Now, Sai Tung. Weekly... Okay, this is a side quest. Beyond's World Tour. We can do this. Beyond's World Tour. Find him in the Grove. The Black Citadel. Rat Assume. Divinity Reach. Lion's Arch. Holbrack. This should just be fun. Fun, quick, easy little thing. Oh, I just need to figure out where I start it. The, the, the shrines, the spirit shrines are fantastic. But they might be just a bit much for the Let's Play. They might be a bit much. It looks like we're missing an event. Water purifier event, not a big deal. Now, Kaineng. Uh, Raptor Runner, we can do these. The Spring of Fling. Now, this one looks good. Find eight lore tablets in New Kaineng. That's good, good lore. The other one's just killing mobs. Doing stuff we've already seen. Transfer power to the jade things. I swear I've already done this. I don't know what that is. That's probably legendary stuff, which we can definitely do too. Okay, so Kaineng, that's fine. The Echo Vowed Wilds. Well, should I just eyeball absolutely everything I want to do? Is there a limit on eyeballs? I don't know how many you can go for. I guess there is. Um, Fort Aspenwood we've already done. Well, that's the challenge at Fort Aspenwood. Which we could cheese, but I'm not interested in showing off. 
A spring of fling. Well, hold on. Let me uneyeball these. These aren't as good. I think there's going to be a couple more in the later maps as well. Siege turtles. I've got to redo the crypt. The Veltart crypt. Actually, I might do that off screen because we already saw the content. Maybe I'll come here at the start of an episode geeking out. Uh, it looks like um, Echo Vald, we're actually basically, like, we've seen all the stuff. Which is pretty cool. Clear every room in the crypt. So, yeah, I think I might go back to the crypts. And finally, Dragon's End. Listen to more of Sue Wan and Aureen talking. We got some of the rides. Oh my god, defeat the Jade Moor without getting hit by a tentacle. <laughs> While the event scaling on that is broken, I don't think I'm going to try that. That's funny. Play with Shrine Guardians. Just do events, do events, do events. Okay. So it doesn't look like there's any big side quests here. Avoid getting struck by her full-size tsunamis ten times. Dodge zero? Wait, what's a full-sized tsunami from Su-1? A full-size tsunami? Anyone got any idea for that about me? Why have I got zero of that? I've dodged a ton of tsunamis. So what's the full-sized one? Is it something I've been assuming is an instant defeat and have just walked out of, but you could actually dodge? Scary. Okay, then Arbor Stone. Hide and seek in Arbor Stone I've never played. The behavior scans, that's just some Quarteria stuff. Maybe it unlocks something good. <laughs> Locate the various samples of Snargle's work. That sounds cool. We can do that. And then, yeah, it's the quests that we're already doing. And then fishing is its own game. So the last few episodes, well, maybe even though it's just the last episode, I don't know. I don't know when we'll fit fishing in. Fishing's pretty big. Masteries were done. Specializations were done. Well, I know we're not though. What do I need for quietus now? What do you want me to do, quietus? You want me to do a bit crafting? Oh, I buy that from the heart. And I've got to find some fungus. We're doing this as well. We're getting quiet, for the love of God. And that's it. Because they didn't add any collections. Like, literally none. Okay, so there you go. So I have now taken stock of genuinely everything in End of Dragon Center. And I've got a good sense of what we'll be doing in the next episodes. But since it's half past two in the morning, I'm going to get going here. So I know that this episode was a bit shorter and a bit all over the place. You know, I'm ranting and raving about season six and stuff for a bunch of it. But I feel pretty good about that. Taking stock, got a lot of cool ideas. And we can kind of just work our way down the list. Sounds fun to me. Uh, using the wiki as well will create some good pace to it. So hopefully you guys have fun with it and I can be a little bit less, you know, stressed out and stuff. And, uh, and yeah, so, uh, so I'll see you guys tomorrow. And hopefully we'll do a nice good long one tomorrow. Uh, thank you to everyone who watched this, came along when it was live. Thanks to everyone who's watching it. It's just a regular video. Please feel free to drop your comments. And, yeah, check out my Season 6 video as well today. Um, I'm going to go look at some of the comments there and see what I've got. Thank you, guys. Thanks as well to friggin' Paco uh, four hours ago with that donation. That was really nice of you. So, cheers. Take care, guys. And um, I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye, guys. <laughs>